the control and everything. I'm like, I'm like A1. Here makes me feel like the first day, uh, the, f- the first time I officially was on set ever. I After- started it, but I'm not sure if we Yeah, there's slight delay, I think, for it to get out to everywhere. We live? I gotta check on this end to make sure I sent it over there. Oh, okay, we are live. I know what it is. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I forgot to change the stream key just as you were saying. Like, it's like, uh, I got to start using the static one. Hold on. I got to update it. Hey, welcome, everybody. Uh, we're, we're actually, we should be on Rumble in a second, but just give me a second. I literally scheduled the thing right here. Here we go. All right. Of course, leave it to me not only to be late, but not have the thing set up correctly. And then here's the other thing. Alright. Alright, we should be on Rumble in like one minute. I think we're good. I think we're good. All right, people. Uh, yeah. Uh, this is probably a very different stream than we've probably done in a little bit. Uh, number one, thank you guys for... Uh, we've been going crazy recently. Obviously, there's been peak amount of drama this and third happening in hip-hop this and third. And, of course, I'm, I'm trying my best to keep up with everything. Uh, this is a slight break, though. This isn't Kendrick dropping a track. This isn't um, Drake responding. This isn't the Ross or anything. We actually are here, and, and I actually took a trip mid all that going on, and I came down to Florida, um, you know, toward my log yesterday, and we are going to be sitting with Donald Trump uh, Jr., and we're just going to be kicking it, man. I know a lot of y'all are used to rap conversations from me. You know, I'm not going to be here trying to cap like I'm the, you know, the biggest person when it comes to, like, knowledge about politics, but definitely... I'm a taxpaying citizen who definitely trying to get some answers going into this next election season. Number one, for anybody who's asking, I'm not Republican, not Democrat. I'm like, I like to think of myself as an independent thinker. Um, but y'all know me from day one. I've always been open to listening to both sides, something that I don't think people have been um, down to do. And why is WAC 100 calling me? <laughs> yeah. I, anyway, so, you know, for, for the people who are watching, this isn't like some like, paid political whatever this is just literally me making a choice and I could have said no honestly right this is me wanting to have a conversation about just everything not only not only like the state of our country or whatever but um also just what like at least it is coming into this next election cycle what the hell is in it for us you know what I mean so um I don't want to call myself I'm not no voice of the culture when it comes to this, these things, I can only speak for me, and hopefully that, you know, we can have an entertaining conversation. So you guys get on up in here. By the way, I will say for the people who are expecting streams about um, Kendrick and Drake or whatever, yes, I heard the same rumors you guys heard too, that today's the day. Um, if that happens, we'll follow up with another stream elsewhere, but, uh, you know, we're just going to kind of kick it, at least on this stream, and we're going to figure out everything, all right? 
All right, kind of having people getting up in here now. All right, I think we're live on all platforms. Somebody says, is this real? <laughs> yeah. Now, I'll tell y'all where, we, where we're at, but I think the Secret Service went like that. Actually, I'm playing. All right. Uh, we're on, Rumble's going up, right? Uh, let me check. Yeah, I'm just here for good conversation, man. I'm gonna read some of y'all. Whatever y'all say in the chat, I'm gonna just read it. It's kind of odd reading the chat like off my phone. Mary, I see you in the chat. Top G raid, yeah, yo, Andrew Tate raided this. Somebody said presidential act. Yo, y'all, I've been telling y'all I'm trying to become like VP, you know? I got to get some skin in the game, right? <laughs> nah, salute to Tate, man. Um, I remember meeting Tate. I met Tate. Everything goes on in my, yo, yo, being in Florida, number one, like everybody knows, like I live in Jersey. Yo, I literally want to move. And if it wasn't for family, I'd be out of here, honestly. Somebody said that cigar. Yeah, I don't smoke, man, but, but I got the urge to smoke today, like, like smoking a cigar. I don't even know what it does for you, it just feel like some bullshit. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Don Joe, thank you for the, uh, the, the 10 bucks. Somebody says, I, I do got some questions that, that are, that are hip-hop. And by the way, listen, you know, me and Don Jr. was kicking it yesterday at dinner, man. Like, he's, he's kind of, he, he's, he's. He's a little cultured. I'm going to keep it up being with you. He's a little cultured. So, you know, we, we're going to get his opinion and his takes on a lot of things. You know, obviously, you know, more than just hip hop stuff, but, you know, kind of like y'all tell me questions to ask. You guys give me questions right now. Whatever questions you guys give me, if it's a good one, I'll, I'll definitely ask them. Ask him if he's Team Kendrick or uh, Team Drake. I got you. Ask about what? So, <laughs> yo, somebody say yo, Hunter Biden could never get. I mean, he could. We just have to have like a crack rock in the middle, you know? It would probably go up still. Uh, ask about Kodak. All right, I got you. Ask who's the big three. I wonder who the big three of politics is, right? Do I have rumble stock? The CEO's over here. He's chilling. Yo, DK, what up, man? Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of exclusively reading the, the rumble chat. So, like, if you guys are watching, by the way, we are on YouTube as well and um, Twitch and, and elsewhere. If you guys want to, like, get a comment in for me to read, please, just, just go on rumble and just, like, say whatever you guys say. Ask about Israel and ask about Ryan Garcia. Ask about, well, Fonny Willis. Yeah, 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 yeah. Actually, I do want to ask about that little key. Ask about what? Oh, ask about if, he's going, uh, if his pops is going to cancel student loan. That's a good question. Ask him if he can get Tori out of jail. Yo, we, yo, I'm going to solicit. Yo, chat. I'm going to solicit a few pardons. Come on, I'm going to solicit a few pardons here, but, like, y'all got to give me, like, y'all can't give me, like, the whole hip-hop. I'm going to solicit a few because we all know, like, low-key, like, this is not me being by, like, we know what's going to happen. I'm going to solicit a few pardons. My short list is, is YB because, you know, YB just got locked, like, yesterday. Nah, nah, he'll, he'll be here in a second. He'll be here in a second. Yo, we giving y'all a chance to get up in this joint, man. My boy Sneeko in the chat. Sneeko said, yo, you got to ask, you got to ask uh, uh, Donald Trump Jr. about the manosphere. Okay. Somebody said, what happens if the Kendrick Lamar drop this, uh, this song drops mid-interview? Yo, we're bumping it mid-interview. Yo, hey, so, so, like, no bullshit. We get picked up yesterday, right? Uh, we get picked up, which, by the way, Don Jr. is so down to earth. He picks us up himself. I'm thinking it's going to be, like, dudes with, like, some, you know, men in black, like, talking to their, their fucking shoulders. and Picks us up. Uh, we're driving to uh, Mar-a-Lago or whatever, and um, his wife, 
his wife, like I started talking about the beef. Of course, I'm keeping it hip hop all the way. And I mentioned Kendrick Lamar and she's like, yo, Kendrick sampled me on his album. No bullshit. Like his wife is sampled on. Um, it's, it's on the end of the intro track for Damn. So I think that's keeping the hip hop. Somebody said Fonny stick. Okay, I could. Okay. Yo, Fresh and Fit in the building. What up, man? Ask about Diddy. I got some stories from last night. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get those on air, but uh, all good. Yeah, he's gonna be here in like five minutes. We're just running these numbers up. Yo, let's get this at least like ten thousand before he gets on camera, bro. By the way, we're on the Rumble chat. I know we're live other places. Let me see how we doing other places right now. Okay, 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 okay. We got about like six, seven thousand on um YouTube. We're at about nine thousand on Rumble. It's all good, man. Hey, chat, y'all got to bear with me. Let me tell you this. I keep telling you, the reason why we run the game, we've always changed the game. When people all go here, we start going there, and then we make like a hard right. That's how it's always been. So, listen, we're number one right now when it comes to rap and music, but we're, we're literally about to do some really dope shit and um, just show people that we could be multifaceted and have a voice that's not only dictating rap conversation, rap beefs and shit like that, but also, um, I'm a grown ass man in my thirties. You don't have to listen to me about something when it comes to some votes. You know what I mean? I'm sorry. Okay. Anyway, by the way, you gotta be 35 to be president, right? I could be president anyway. I wasn't born here. I was born in Jamaica. You gotta lift that junk. All right. Let me see what else you guys hit on rumble. Somebody says, uh, yeah, legalize weed federally. That's a good question. <laughs> Somebody said, uh, what was I most shocked about meeting um, uh, Don Trump Jr. and his family that I wasn't expecting? I, I thought they were going to be bougie a little bit. Like, I, I didn't think we were going to be down to earth. Like, I didn't think it was going to be so personable. I thought it would be like, like, you got to imagine the children of a billionaire. I ain't gonna lie to you. I think if I, if I was a billionaire and I, or I, if I was a kid of a billionaire, I'd be spoiled as shit. He was mad down to earth. Cool as hell. Hey, don't worry. Hey, next time it's gonna be me, Don Jr., and the big guy. Come on now. Who y'all voting for? Y'all trying to, y'all still trying to make your opinions up? Ask about aliens? All right. Okay. We're almost there, people. He's going to be on like in a couple minutes. How was the meeting? What? <laughs> uh, how was Marilog? Like, yo, so we got like a whole vlog. I'm going to be dropping a vlog, vlog on the channel. We should have had the B roll for this. My man Leafy heard me. Um, I'm not going to lie. Like, that place is like a castle. It's like it's like a it's like a modern day castle, if I can say that. Somebody said, if if you vote for Biden, you're lost. Hey, I'm not gonna give nobody voting advice. All I'm gonna just say, man, I think as long as we're holding people accountable, and you know we get to speak to the candidates themselves and see what they're they're really about, uh, where they stand, and also we get to judge their record. What have you done? What you have you, you know? What, what you gonna do? Yeah. Ask about Candace Owens. Shout out to Candace, man. I rock with Candace. Somebody said, ask about Meek, man. <laughs> you know what I mean, man? I should tell him, you know what I mean? The, the next president's son on him. Like, what's up? <laughs> yo, nah, everybody's going crazy. Uh, somebody says, yo, Sneeko says, yo, you got to drink Henny with Junior. Uh, yo, listen, no, he, uh, he, uh, he got a cigar. Uh, he's chill, like. I'm pretty sure, like, well, I'm sipping some, um, they got the expensive shit over here. They gave me some 1942, so I don't know if he drinks, but um, it would be, would it be epic? Yo, they asked me what I should have, um, what I wanted, and I was too shook to tell them Hennessy. I was like, that's some basic, that's some, that's some nigga shit, man. Like, I, I couldn't even say it, so I was like, uh, what you got? <laughs> Drinking Henny with the, 
with the president's son would have been like epic. Somebody said, ask him something about Israel, then let him cook. The more he talks, this is the better it gets. Ask about the pardons for Big Islam. All right. Ask him about how his family feels about cryptocurrency. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, thank you. By the way, o- off the top, I do also want to just um, shout out to some of the sponsors for the stream. Um, first and foremost, Underdog Fantasy. Uh, they're one of the reasons that, you know, we keep kind of going up and up. Uh, if you guys do uh, play Underdog Fantasy, make sure you use code ACADEMICS. Yo, the playoffs are going crazy. My man, uh, LeBron, he just caught the win. Steph Curry can't win goddamn nothing when it comes to the playing tournament. Uh, well, actually, the playoffs didn't officially start as the playing. But, yeah, if you guys want to, like, you know, uh, play fantasy sports in relation to the NBA, Underdog Fantasy, go check that out, all right? Okay, cool. Let me see what's going on. Brittany, what's going with you? It's an act doing big things. We love you. Ask him about the solar. The solar that hit? And is it about to affect our whole grid anytime? What the hell is a solar? A solar eclipse? Who's that one? A solar flare from the eclipse? I don't know, man. I don't know. Don Joe, I see you too. All right, cool. Uh, just give me one second here. I'm about to throw this to my Instagram, put like a little swipe. Yeah, my, yeah, my phone is it's like burning up, my nigga. This is about to die. <laughs> Yo, you can get me um, like a charger? Yeah. All right. Anyway, until then. Ask about how you feel about the world, boss. Like, come on. Marry, smash, kill Hillary. <laughs> Yo, Sneaker got the questions. Yo, Sneaker, I got you, dog. Yo, yo, we try to sneak Sneaker in here. Nah, they wasn't having that bitch. I ain't gonna lie to you. They said, we see that nigga on, on property, we gonna get, mm. Somebody says, uh, ask, no, no, yeah, I ain't gonna lie, that's one of my first questions. Like, what you finna do for us, man? Like, spell it out. You know, and, and obviously, you know, by the way, Don Jr. isn't a politician, right? You know, like, obviously, it's like, politics adjacent but it's like it's his father that's running right but if you can't get the father you gotta get the son you feel me <laughs> i know but like you want some shit you said ask him actually it might be a good question wait you got, you got me a charger oh perfect um ask for what lock it and have some genuine conversation all right, okay, let me, let me text you this then. These are my only little points I wrote down. I definitely got to get the answer for Diddy or Kendrick. Not Diddy or Kendrick. I'm asking about <laughs> If Diddy get caught, do you pardon him? <laughs> nah, I can't troll. No trolling. No trolling. Uh, here we go. Oh, yeah. I ain't this one. Perfect. Oh, and it's the old one. All right, good. I'm, I should be straight. All right. Yeah, and, and, and I'm probably going to be streaming, like, later on tonight, too. So, later on tonight, I'm going to do regular hip-hop stream. Um, so, that's why, I like, like we're, we're only going to be streaming. We'll see how the conversation goes. But I'm trying to tell you guys, like... If, if you like more content from me, you should support this rather than just be like, yo, he's not talking about Drake right now. Nah, I'm still going to be, I'm going to do a stream all on there. Yo, this is like a perfect spot to live at. I got to move to Florida. Okay, cool. Ask about the 94 crime bill. Okay, that's a good question. Bring up the who? Okay, all right. Uh, I, th- I think we should think we should get started. Uh, um, yeah, all good. Come on, let's get this thing going on. Here he comes, people. Yeah, it's getting mic'd up right about now. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five. What's My guy, how are you? What's up, man? Oh, that's good. Good times last night. Hey, good times last night, man. Uh. Uh, listen, people, uh, if you guys don't know, uh, Donald Trump Jr. What's happening, guys? 
I'm going to follow along with the stream here as well. Yeah? Yeah, number one, amazing time, amazing dinner yesterday. I told you from my met you, right? I was like, the first thing that I was so shocked by, I was like, you're so down to earth. Like, just like you come across like a regular person. I think it's sort of the, you know, listen, I get that I've been blessed. Like, I, you know, I totally understand that. But yeah. like, uh, both my parents were sort of really, they made sure we understood how lucky we were. Yeah, you know, yeah. my mom, you know, she escaped communist Czechoslovakia, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, under that time. And so growing up, like, from the age of five or six, she sent me there every summer in the, the 80s, like, behind the Iron Curtain. And it was like, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I get it. And so I think we just had an appreciation for our country, how lucky we were. We always got it. Yeah. yeah. You know, so I think that makes a difference. Yeah. I, like walking through my log yesterday, I was like, you know, I was kind of surprised that like you get your hands dirty like a good amount. Like you, for, this is how I thought. Let me give you the perception. Right. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I have a bunch of questions that. You know, certain people knew I was going to be and say, like, if you don't ask him this, like, you can't come back, right? So we'll get to that. But, but, you know, um, first impression, when, when, you know, Chris hits me, he's like, yo, you're going to go sit down with Donald Trump Jr. I'm like, all right, this is going to be such, this is going to be a thing where I probably don't even get to connect with you, Mm -hmm. even on a personal level, just because I'm thinking, like, you're surrounded by security staffers, a million people, except you, like, you, you pull up. I was, I was your driver last night. Yeah, yeah you were, like exactly, exactly. And I remember meeting you at UFC um, when I met your dad. Down in Miami. Yes. Yeah, that was a great night. And I remember when I was trying to get a picture taken with your dad, and then you're the first one who was like, no, no I'll take the picture, it's cool. And, I, and, and for whatever reason, that shocked me a little bit. Just because, like, we, we kind of, the perception that I have of, you know, someone of that opulence or that stature, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, you probably don't do regular things or you don't move around like a regular person. Uh, yeah, I, yes. I mean, like I said, I, I get some of those things. I think for us, it was always, with my dad, it was like, hey, man, if you're going to get into real estate, you're going to build buildings, like, you better know how to dig the foundation. Yeah, yeah. Right? So, like, I mean, I worked on job sites my whole life as a kid growing up, right? You know, I put up sheetrock. I dug foundations. I ran chainsaws, clearing landscaping stuff for golf courses. So, you know, his logic was like, you know, we started at the bottom rung. And sort of worked. That way, you know, hey, when you go do build it eventually, like, you know how much it costs, you know how long it takes, yeah, yeah. you understand what goes into it, and no one's going to bullshit you. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, there, there was a component of really actually understanding, and I think he was very different uh, than probably a lot of the friends I grew up with in, like, you know, New York City. And again, I don't pretend like I came from, you know, I grew up on the 70th floor of Trump Tower. Like, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like, it, it's different, but, like, he made sure we understood that other side and that we worked that way. It wasn't like... Congratulations! Here's your corner office, and uh, yeah. you know now you start learning. It was it was really different. You know, I started working at you know 13 away for summers, and like that's what we did. And then my mom was the same way, kind of uh, pushing that. So they always understood that. You know, that's not to say you know we weren't spoiled, but we were spoiled with like cool experiences. We got to hang out with some pretty cool people. We, we had some funny conversations last night about yeah. that. You know, like you you told me you lived next door to Michael Jackson. I did. Michael literally lived next door to us for like a couple of years in Trump Tower. Like I. I used to play Nintendo with Michael Jackson growing up as a kid. And, you know, Michael was a unique guy. I mean, you know, one of the great, tal- one of the great talents probably anywhere had his own, you know, I guess, you know, some issues just, you know, growing up in that kind of stardom. And- Hold on. Are we, talking about, are we talking about white-faced Michael or black-faced Michael? I mean, transitional Michael. Like, transitional, you know, you know okay, like, this okay. is sort of in between, okay, right? A like, lot of my- Michael. Like, I get it. Uh, my, my soft voice, but that was always kind of the case. But, like... You know, my first concert was Thriller. Yeah, yeah, okay. Right, which yeah. was like, and that was a time where, like, we can talk about Drake and Kendrick yeah. and Jay-Z and whoever it is. Like, at that time, there Mike's was one dude, guy. and it was Michael. Like, it wasn't like, who's the biggest, who's yeah, the, yeah, like, yeah. dude, there was one guy, and it was Michael. And, like, uh, you know, like I said, he was our neighbor for years, but he also was, like, sort of, like, very different than those other guys, right? Like, yeah. he was, like, a, a big kid, basically. Yeah, I yeah, think yeah. he never really probably had a childhood. He was pushed into stardom. You know, whoever it was, they just, you know, worked him for so long that, like, honestly, I think, like, hanging out with us at times was, like, he got to be a kid, even if he was, I don't know, in his 30s, you know what I mean? Like, I was 12, you know what I mean? And uh, I remember I got pissed at Michael one time because I I was playing with my brother and him, and we got, like, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And, again, my parents made us work for stuff that we wanted. Again, we lived in Trump Tower, but, like, if we wanted something, like, here's the goal, you got to go work for it, you'll get it. Uh, And so... You know, Michael was like, you know, this is peak Michael. And it was like, you know, he loved the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Nintendo game that we were playing. Yeah. And my dad's like, oh, yeah, you should just take it. I'm like, 
what? Like, like it's Michael Jackson. He, he can call someone at Nintendo. Yeah. They'll send it to him. And he was like, oh, yeah, that's great. I'll take it. I'm like, motherfucker, well, I took my Nintendo up. game. I was like, this is bullshit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, it, but it was cool. So, yeah, no, it was, a, it was interesting growing up that way. Wow. Uh, among the, uh, the many people you've met, um, you're still keeping, like, you know, how is, how is your father, like, in his demeanor with you? Because it, I also, it felt like there was a lot of discipline, like, you know, even just talking to you yesterday. Yeah. And that had to be instilled in you. And how do you do that, though? Like Honestly, like, that's probably my mom. Really? That was my mom. Like, my mom, you know, was like that Eastern European, like, nope. Like, you know, we grew up in communism. Like, yeah. she, uh, you know, she took care of business that way. Like, my dad, you know, I, I think he got, you know, he made himself available, but it was on his terms. Like, you know, it's like, yeah. you know, if I was with him, it's like, we're going to go look at a job site. And you could always come, but, like, we weren't playing catch. We were going on a job site. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It was different. Uh, you know, my mom was sort of the drill sergeant, like, no, this is what you're doing. You know, she's really good management. My dad kind of took over once it's like, oh, you're done with business school. Now your ass is mine. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, now yeah. I can, you know, so it, it was it, unconventional, but it, it sort of worked. Yeah. So, you know, in the world I come from, as soon as they hear I'm sitting with you, a million things that they've thought or heard come to the service. Yeah. They're like, well, you're going to sit with him or you got to be a sellout. And, 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 and then that uh, comes with, hey, that guy doesn't like black people. That guy's racist. Yeah. You know, um, you had a comment in, in Vanity, Vanity Fair where you're like, well, if, if my dad was racist, like he was pretty bad at it. Right. And yeah. Well, I mean, if you look at the history, right? I mean, look at some of the people, you know, that have come out, you know, even even recently, you know, whether it I mean, Tyson from back in the day, but he'll say it to this day. It's like, hey, man. Trump's the only guy that was always honest with me. I may not have always taken his advice, but mm. I should have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like, um, you know, there's pictures of me, you know, back at, actually, I think it was like Tyson Spinks back in like the 80s. Like, it's me on a, in a bowl cut. I'm sitting on Herschel Walker's lap, one of the great NFL players of all time. Like, yeah, I, yeah. I used to go to Disney World with Herschel Walker and his family because my dad was like, I'm not taking you to Disney World. Like, go with Herschel. Like, you, you can tag along in there. Like, I'm like, if you're, like, you're not letting a kid go yeah, at yeah. six years old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? You're just you're not, not doing those things. The, and the black family. You know, right? then you talk about sort of, you know, all the, the rap songs. And, and dude, and all the guys we hung out with. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like, you know, between Atlantic City, you know, between sort of the events and the entertainers, like, you know, I had dinner with ha you know, half the people that, you know, magically became haters like eight years ago. I'm like, I don't know, dude, it was weird. Like three months ago when we had dinner, you didn't seem to have a problem with any of these things. You know, like he was one of the most mentioned people in rap songs. Like everyone wanted to be like Trump, had yeah. money like Trump. They, 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 they was getting it like Trump. They were spending it like Trump. Yeah. Um, until it, it became political. Yeah. Well, and, that, and that, again, that was sort of the, the interesting thing. And, you know, I, I understand the game. I get it. Like, you know what I mean? But it, it was interesting when you have people that, like, you actually considered, like, real friends. That was, like, it was just convenient for them. You mm. know, whether it's, well, you know, my record label will be just fine with me, you know, shit talking there so, was a big song, you know, by uh, two rappers, um, um, one that passed away, Nipsey Hussle and, mm -hmm. and um, YG was like, fuck Donald Trump. That, that, that was the song. Yeah. I mean, that was so opposite of everything we'd ever seen. But, you know, even, you know. When that's happening, what are you, what are you feeling like? Because, because now, like, culture and, and just like, you know, you guys have been in this entertainment sphere, um, yeah. obviously been doing real estate and business, but, like, like, your dad's like a star, right? And he's been beloved. And then. Listen, I, Instantly, I, things change. Come down the elevator. Yeah, well, that, that, that was, uh, no, it wasn't instant, actually. It was sort of interesting, right? You came down the elevator, uh, you know, this sort of the famous thing from The Simpsons, right? Mm -hmm. Like, it, it, it magically played out. He gave that speech, and he's talking about, well, you know, there are rapists coming across the border, drug dealers. Yeah, yeah. Well, it turns out that's 100% true, right? <laughs> I, mean, it, I mean, it's not even, you know, but what was interesting and what people don't think of, they're like, the outrage was right then. No, no, it wasn't. Mm. The outrage came about two weeks later when he started actually making gains. Okay, so right. they thought he, he was started winning. It was like, yeah. ah, okay, it's not a big deal. This is fine. The second he started winning, that's when it was like, oh yeah, this is what it was, and that's, what, and you know, it, you know, the racist thing sort of sucks because it's like, it, I guess it's become like the easy button for anyone who doesn't actually have facts or points. So it's like, yeah, yeah. oh, like <laughs> racist. Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. Well, we're not. We're talking about math. Like, what do you what do you mean it's racist? Like, uh, and w the problem with it is now. It almost feels like, you know, the pendulum all was overcorrects, right? So I'm not saying it's not a problem. I'm not saying it doesn't exist. But I, I will say it's not the cause of and solution for all of life's problems. Yeah. Which is sort of, which is, I guess it's sort of become that. 
uh, for many, at least on the left, right? It's like, that's the easy button, anything's racist. And what the problem is, is for people who are actually affected by that, and there is some, at this point now you hear it, it's like, you roll your eyes, you yeah. move on, because like, well, if everything's racist, then nothing's yeah. racist, right? It's like, and, and, and that's the problem. So those who are actually afflicted, um, and, and there is some. I'm not, like I said, I'm not saying it's not a problem. I'm not saying it's not an issue in our country and across the world. I've traveled the world, and you know, there's places far more racist than anything I've seen in America. And I've been in, you know, they yeah. try, oh, you're, if you're conservative, you're racist. Like, I don't know, man. I've been pretty far into the heart of like the deep right, and like it couldn't be further from the truth, but it doesn't matter, right? That's a narrative. Well, well, well also, that narrative, even like, you know, it, it, you know, I, I remember, I can't remember who said it was most famously. They, they're like, yo, hey, that red MAGA hat is, that's the new KKK hat. Yeah, I'm like, really? <laughs> like, but, but then you see, like, if you have a black conservative, it's like, well, that person's instantly racist. I'm like, well, what do you mean? You, you know, it, it, you can have different viewpoints. I think it's so important to actually, you know, have that dialogue. I mean, if you look at the, you know, you, you look at an administration, you look at even the things, you know, my father's administration did for the black, before we talk about even the economy, but like, you know, the permanent funding of, historically black universities, right? Kind of a big deal. Like, why didn't others do that before? Yeah. Trump's so racist. Why didn't the Democrats do all of these things? You had, you know, obviously opportunity zones in the inner cities. It's probably not benefiting me, right? But it is yeah. benefiting a lot of other people. You had, you know, the First Step Act and like, hey, guess what? Someone smokes weed. Like, we're not going to throw him in jail for 25 years anymore. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Um, you know, these were actually like serious gains that, you know, probably benefit certain communities a lot more. And yet, if, if Trump does it, it's like, well, that doesn't matter. That should have always been the case. It's like, fine, maybe it should have. Why didn't anyone do it? Do you think mostly it's media? I, the one thing I've realized, and, and this is why I like politics, like, you know, I, I, I like where I exist in, like, culture and music because politics seems so divisive, even in the dissemination of it, yeah. even on a media perspective. I, if right. I watch one channel, one guy is completely evil. He's a devil. He yeah. does nothing right. Correct. And if I watch the other, it says the, the exact opposite. So... You know, it's, it's hard to, you know, if you're someone who, like me, I'm, you know, I like to listen to both sides of the argument, and yeah. I think I'm a logical logical enough person. I'll be like, well, you both kind of are right, but depending on how I feel and how I want to move forward, I'm going with this guy, right? Yeah. Well, and they've got rid of nuance, right? There's no yeah. more, like, you have to be 100% this or 100% that, or you're in, like, this no man's land. Yeah, right? yeah. It, it doesn't work, and I, I'm with you. Like, I, I like having that conversation you know, and figuring out what that nuance is. And, you know, that's contrary to everything, you know, they say about me. I'm the most extreme human being in the world. I, mean, I was listening back when you were sort of just doing the chat, you know, yeah. talking Hunter Biden. I understand that, you know, <laughs> I, I, I am not the upstanding citizen that Hunter Biden is with you. <laughs> crack pipes and hookers and like, I'm like but, but if that was like the Don Jr. laptop, yeah, yeah, yeah. And there was videos of me now, with it, hookers if, taking if a billion a from China. If, if you had a crack pipe, if this was a crack pipe instead of a cigar, like, oh man, they'll give me shit for smoking a cigar. But like, wait, if, wait do we have one? We can go yeah, viral. That's what yeah, I'm trying to yeah, do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, someone bring me my crack pipe. Uh, you know, it, but it's like I look at that. I'm like, wait a second. Yeah. Like, you know, I'm the scumbag, but that guy's <laughs> no, no. He just has an addiction problem. Like, listen, everyone, like people have these things. Like, it doesn't absolve you from being like a piece of shit in every yeah, other yeah. aspect of your life. Like. You know, so I'd love some fair treatment in these things. You know, I, we don't get that from a media, although I, it's coming around. I mean, like, listen, you, you see guys, you know, you're, you're going to be more culture, but like you see you know, sort of the rise of other people talking politics, whether it's, it's me, more independent media. Yeah. Know, even, you know, and the, the you, Tate brothers and stuff like that, they get in there and they're talking about these things. And it, people are finally like, oh, wait a minute. Like the nonsense I heard on the news, you know, they're busy. It's hard, man. It's not easy to get by in this world, no matter what. Right. Like everything's hard. Yeah, yeah. You know, you, you may not pay attention to these things day in and day out, right? You're listening in the background and, oh, this must be true. Like, why would they lie? But now you see everything, whether it's the narrative about COVID, whether it was, you know, with Trump, with Russia, like, he's a Russian asset. He's working, like, I'm like, yeah, he, he needed the money. Like, but, but it didn't stop it from being, like, the real story for years, right? Yeah. I mean, they wanted to, you know, put me, I did 50 hours of congressional testimony for treason. Treason. That is a crime punishable by why? death. But apparently for being a Russian asset, which now it turns out to be bullshit, but it didn't stop it from being bullshit for three years when they're, when they're doing these things to you to try to break you. It's sort of, it's what you see with, with the trials right now. I mean, in, in New York, you hear, oh, Trump did this. They don't tell you that they, they changed the law in New York to be able to go after him. They took 
you know, they're letting go actual like, hardened criminals that are beating up cops in the streets. They're turning those felonies into misdemeanors, whereas they take at best a misdemeanor from my father and turn it into a felony. They yeah. move the statute of limitations because it's expired to be able to go after a political enemy. I mean, these are the people that are screaming about fascism, they're, and they're acting a lot like the fascists, you know? Um, so, so, what's, like, not only yours, but, like, even your father's relationship with media? Because, like, I, I do think the first time, like, Americans heard or even questioned what they heard from whatever news source they had was when your father came out and said, that's fake news. That's not true. And yeah. even if necessarily every time he used that phrase, it, it was about something that was actually not true, it actually made people rethink the sources they were getting it from. I think 100%. And Listen, he, I think he historically had a great relationship with the media, right? Mm. When he was just like a real estate guy yeah, yeah, yeah. and hung out with cool people and whatever, it's like... He was to be doing interviews all the time. You could call, you know, you, you could work a story and like, you know, you could get some benefit of the doubt. You could be like, hey, listen, here's what actually happened. Now it doesn't matter. Like, you can show it. Like, I, I've, been, I've been in the room when stuff happens. Yeah. You know, big stuff. And it's like, you see the reporting on it. I'm like, dude, I was there. Like, I got five people that will tell you. No, no, no. We have a source that says this. I go, they, they tried doing it to me. It was like one of these, you know, it used to be one of these big magazines that now has gone out of business because yeah. it was all bullshit the whole time. But they did this to me. It was like... It's a couple of years ago when my father was still in office. And they're like, we have a reliable source that says you were on a plane with Jeffrey Epstein to the Epstein <laughs> Island. I'm like, I, like, it just didn't happen. It didn't, but it didn't matter. Like, I was like, wait, wait, they ran that. No, well, they, were, they, were, they were feeding me to the story. Like, okay, yeah. what do you have to say? I was like, I wasn't. Oh, so they hit you yeah. for comment. So, okay. then they're, so then I'm going back. And it was like from eight years prior. And then I was like, well, do you mean this island? Because I went to like, a friend of mine was like develops resorts. And he was yeah. opening up this island, not Epstein Island. And I was like, you mean that? There's like, well, that may have been, but apparently Jeffrey Epstein was there. You flew with him, so we're going to label you, you know, a pedophile. And like, I'm like, never happened. I, I actually did fly down private with someone. Yeah. And I remembered, but like, who keeps flight logs from 12 years prior or whatever it was? So yeah. they, were, they were so desperate to try to put to me in there. But I'm like, that makes so I, I called the guy. I was like, hey, listen, I know there's a long shot. He's like, oh, dude, my pilot's so good. He keeps meticulous records. They, sh they had the flight logs. I said it to the guy, now if you print it, I'm going to sue your ass off. And, dude, it was like I ripped his heart out. Because he didn't care about the truth. He cared about the He just wanted story. to fuck me. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. It, it, it didn't matter what I did. It didn't matter what actually happened. He wanted to do it. I go, hey, you know what? Why don't you write the story about Bill Clinton, Bill Gates, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, all these guys in the media, all these TV personalities that, all, that actually went to the island like 56 times. Maybe... Explain that, because you were really, really into writing a story that I was maybe on the plane. Turns out it's, you know, and when I, I broke your heart by proving it wrong, the story so th there, there's no interest in the truth. It's just how they further sort of their objective. And in this case, they're just working for that side, you know? So, so how do you have, uh, like, you know, I think that extends even to, like, where even my business is, right? Like, I do a lot of business on social media. You know, I, I famously told a story, because when, when I first joined Rumble, Everyone was like, yo, this guy's now, yeah. he's right wing. And I was like, you guys don't even know who I've ever voted for. Yeah. Hey, I might like one candidate, but it doesn't mean I'm just like, I'm aligned with the entire party. Uh, instantly, everyone was like in an uproar saying yeah. like, I'm just this right wing guy. And I brought up this fact. So like on last election cycle, you know, we do paid ads on certain yeah, platforms. Yeah. You know, it's part of our media strategy. Only the, only the Democrats came to us with paid campaigns. Hey, let's throw this into the mix. Hey, we have this ad slandering Trump. Yeah. We have this ad saying whatever. They, they're actually having a imprint to some extent on the yeah. platform. But I'm the, I'm, I was never labeled a left-wing platform. Or I was labeled like, hey, whatever. Yeah. But now it was a problem just because I, I, I wanted to even listen to the other side. Well, actually, and even when I spoke about politics. Yeah. But joining Rumble, that wasn't even a political move. That was a business move. They looked at it and say, well, on that site, there are right-wing leaning people, which means you must align like that because, yeah. you know, you're trying to line your pockets on, on that level. Well, I mean, it, it, yeah, like... I came on Rumble because I came on, I was like one of the second or third verified users on Rumble. You know, Chris reached out to me through Dan Bongino and was like, hey, and this was going on while like Twitter threw my father off. And I, you know, I had a pretty big following there and other places. And I, yeah. I could see the shadow bands on, you know, the meta platforms and Instagram. It's like, 
That, that's you know, what I was going to say. I mean, I got 7 million followers on Instagram, and, like, I used to get half a million likes a post. If I get 50,000, it's a big post right now. Like, that didn't change. Like, I haven't had any growth in three years. It's this, I don't conform to what they want, and so they're going to suppress it, right? So I got on Rumble because it's free speech. And by the way, there are plenty of people that are leftists that probably disagree with everything that I say. And, like, that's fine. I'm not, I'm not going to not join Rumble because there's, they're allowing other people, but... All I'd love, and it, hey, give me a fair shot. Like, so, so let me have th- that conversation, have that on the regular platforms. So what do you think about, like, shadow bans? Because, because I guess that point I was saying, like, so essentially, like, you know, we normally post about culture and yep. music. And by the way, I've told people, like, when we came to Rumble, like, Chris actually told me, he says, hey, listen, if you don't talk about politics before, don't yeah. talk about it now. Yeah. And, you know, he wasn't trying to get me to be political at all. And, and, and by the way, I don't think I'm political even still. Yeah. But I, am I an American? Of course, yeah. right? And, and when we get to a time like this, especially if you have a platform, you can sit idly by. Uh, and by the way, I would have the same conversation with, with Hunter Biden if he could get off the crack rock. Like, I mean, if he, was, if he was able to get here, we'd be able to do this. Now, what I realized on those platforms, though, I remember I posted something that was, uh, it was a factual, it was actually yeah. a factual thing, but it was, it went against Biden. Yeah. And essentially, I got shadow banned for 180 days. Yeah. I won't say what platform because I have a good relationship I got with him. Basically, I, I, I talked to a few people and enough people that I'm, I'm like, what's going on? They're like, hey, listen. You're falling into the realm of being political. Just stick to the music. Yeah. But if that's you shout, you get but if you shout on Trump, nothing would change. Mm, and yeah, that's yeah, the yeah. difference, right? Exactly. There's... Uh, you know, if you if you lean left and then you know that's fine. Like, there's no consequence to that. Yeah, yeah. If you re- lean right, you have to work that much harder to be able to get your message out there. Like I said, I see that with me. You know, on Facebook, on Instagram, on you know, just all, all of the places that I've been at. It it's just different. The more I started getting, even if I had more followers, and I haven't, you know, I haven't had follower growth in three years because I'm just <laughs> I, well, I'm out there and I'm vocal. But that's why it's like it's so important to have a platform like Rumble where you can actually do that, where you can get both sides of that argument. You can actually hear it, but, you know, if you look at even Google, you know, just the way the search works, you know, you're only getting, you know, you're getting the CNN version of the story, not the truth. Mm. You know, the first seven pages will be that narrative. And, you know, maybe on page 300 of the search, you know, if you're really diligent and you spend seven hours, you know, scrolling, you can maybe find, you know, another viewpoint. Uh, But, you know, it it is designed to, to push people to think that, that if narrative is accurate, not even if it's not. Do, do you believe that then, you know, um, when, when Elon took over X, or Twitter now called X, um, it, you know, he released the Twitter files and basically showed a lot of suppression, right? Yeah. You know, and it was basically suppression of certain voices. That was election interference, things, really. Right? I mean, it, well, clearly. It, it, it would bubble up to that level, especially during the election season yeah. when people are going to those places for the information. Do, do you feel like those, you know, social media entities, which, you know, people receive my content on social media, they receive, yeah. your, whether it's, you know, someone disseminate your show or a clip off of TikTok's um, Instagram, mm-hmm. uh, Facebook, it could even be uh, X itself. What, do you feel like they should have some oversight um, on a maybe a federal level? You know, I, I'm because sort of it becomes a, a town yeah, square, right? I, I, and, yeah, well, and I'm, I'm sort of an absolutist on the free speech thing. And, mm-hmm. you know, there's consequences, Yeah, yeah. right? Like, you know, your following can, you know, stop following you if you say, you know, something uh, that's, you know, disgusting or gross. But, like... You know, I, I don't believe, you know, if they enforce them equally, maybe there's something there. You know, I, I'm, you probably hear me ranting about all the pedophile shit that you see going on in some of these things. It's like, how is this happening? And yet they don't seem to discourage some of that stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. Pushing some of that. But like if I say a political opinion based on fact, but it's conservative, it's right leaning. Well, you know, 10 percent of those people will see it. But like the people who see my stuff now are people who follow me. And no one else, yeah. you know, with the advent of AI, now they're able to do it. I, they used to be like, well, how do you know you're being shadow banned? It's like, well, because yesterday I was sending tweets and I was getting five to 7,000 retweets a tweet. Today I'm getting 12. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it, it's a pretty significant <laughs> yeah, yeah, change. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Something, something happened and it wasn't just coincidence. Like, I have the same following, the same people. They're just not seeing it. Now, what's really scary is sort of AI is going to make it seem like, oh, no, look, you, you're, you're, your friend saw it. It's like, yeah, but. Someone who's not my friend, but maybe likes the similar content, he's never, never, never going to end up on my page, page to be like, oh, you know, that's kind of funny. And I get, I get the comment all the time. It's like I, my Instagram page is basically like a shit posting meme page at this point. Like I just have some fun with it. 
And like the number one comment I hear out in the public is like, dude, your page is hilarious. Like it's really funny. Like uh, probably irrespective of whether you're right leaning or left leaning, you can yeah. still have fun. Just like I, I have a good time with some of the jokes about my father. Like I, yeah. you know, I bring them up at the dinner table sometimes. Yeah. Like it's, it's a good time. We, uh, and you know, but now it's like just those people will see it. So you, you just see like, hey, you'll get no growth. It'll appear like you're getting some clicks, but not enough. And I just know because I do all my own social myself. Like I don't have a team that does that for me. You know, I, I post my shit. So when I hit that button... You actually seem like a guy who are, who's so hands-on. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I, I, I would imagine, like, like your Secret Service stuff. Like, you're just, like, protection to the max. Like you're Yeah, just, no, I'm, I'm just, you know, I drive myself places. I don't have a Secret Service detail. I, you know, I, I don't know. I, I don't like all that extra noise, frankly. It's, it's not me. I don't have an entourage of, you know, it's not what I do, right? So yeah. uh, I'm a pretty simple that guy that way. But, like, I also think with a lot of these things, like... Uh, and I'm sure it's this way, actually, in the music world. Like, the guys who are truly authentic and know, yeah. like, that resonates with their following. No, of course. You know, people course. get it. And people get when, you know, you're you sort know. of a production of a marketing team somewhere, and it's all bullshit. And it's like, so for me, you know, when I hit that button to send something, I know what it's going to do before. I'm like, yeah, you know, yeah. fine, this is filler content, or that one's going to go big, yeah, and that yeah, one's yeah. hot. I'm you pushing got, the like, boundaries. fire tweet. So. And it's like, you know, now when you're getting 5%, 10% of what you know it should be getting, mm-hmm. like, come on. Yeah. Okay, so I do have to ask because I, I know, yeah. like, again, these are these are like trigger words and buzzwords, like, in the world that I come from, mm-hmm. um, and I, and I and I've heard like the these are like the the intellectuals in our world. They always say this when they're discredited or they're let's say questioning, right? Mm-hmm. They're like make America great. They're like that's that's also like a phrase that is kind of meant to be a racist thing because supposedly. Those people who use that phrase only think America was great when African Americans weren't having a good time in this country. I mean, let's say, I think if someone was looking at it objectively, out, outside of the lens of sort of, you know, a pretty crazy world in which we live, like, I think it's a stretch. But I, I understand that that's a talking point. Like, I, you mm-hmm. know, I don't think that's at all what it means. I think, you know, when we're, as we sit here today, you know, they're voting on sending another $60 billion to Ukraine. Mm. But, like, we have kids that are graduating high school that can't read or do math. Like, you know, you're an American. I'm an American. I'm the son of an immigrant. I guess you're I'm an immigrant, immigrant yourself, yeah. right? Like, it, it, like, these are, it's about people who are in America. That's all citizens. That's not, you know, when you see the gains that other countries are making relative to us, we're, we're giving aid to countries. You know, we're paying pensions in Ukraine, but we can't take care of, like, our pensioners in America. You know, Social Security is going to be bankrupt. Our unfunded pension liability in America is a multi-trillion dollar problem that is not going to be there for people when they need it. Mm. And like, but we're going to pay the pensions of people who work in Ukraine. Like, are you crazy? We're going to take care of their border, but not ours. And we can say what we want about immigration. And we're all for, you know, sort of immigration that's you know, accretive and uh, merit based and you know, people who can create jobs and fix, you know, add value. But we have a school system that's a disaster. Right. We have a healthcare system that's collapsing and we're going to add 12 million people into it that can never pay for that. It's, it's probably not going to hurt me. Like, you know, I, I can pay for my private, whatever it is, and, and handle it. It's going to hurt a lot of people in, in, in other communities that were probably for the first time ever actually getting some real lifts. Yeah, you know, I, you have three years, three and a half years now under Joe Biden and you had four years under Trump. Like, can any like, I don't know, open up your stream like other than the haters who are just going to say whatever because that's what they're going to do. Like, is anyone really, can they say with a straight face they're better off today in any way, shape, or form than they were four years ago? Well, I'll give, I'll give you two quotes, and, and I'll have you speak to, because, you know, I do think that, you know, our community and the community I come from, I think they're finally waking up a little bit to say, hey, listen, you know what? You know, I remember Ice Cube, you know, one of our, you know, hip-hop mm-hmm. pioneers is like, when he was like, hey, listen, I'm, I'm going to have a conversation yeah. with a motherfucker who, who's going to be able to do something. I'm not going to not talk to him yeah. and not get anything done. And, and a lot of people were upset. But I think now people are down to listen. You know, I'll give you two quotes and I'll have you react to them. You know, you have uh, um, Joe Biden, who famously t- tells my friend Charlemagne the God, he says, yo, you ain't black if you don't vote for me. And then you have your father who says, well, what do you guys have to lose? Yeah. Oh, I mean... What I'll, I agree. Like, what what do you have to lose? Have these policies been good? You know, have have you know has you know graduation rates improved? Has as you know 
dollars, real dollars in your pocket improved. I mean, hey, again, I, I'm very clear about where I come from. I totally get it. If I go to the grocery store and I'm pissed off, I have five young kids. If I go to McDonald's with my kids, I'm like, 50 bucks for you know, <laughs> me and my two boys? Like, what? Like, if I have sticker shock, what's everyone else have? What's a family that's making 50 grand a year working their ass off for it? What do they have? It's not going to change my habits. I'm not pretending to be, you know, one of these guys, oh, it really, it doesn't hurt me. But if I'm like, damn. What does that mean? Imagine, like that, right? Dude, those people are getting crushed. Like, what do you have to lose? It's not, these policies have not been working. If you look at inflation, real inflation up 17, 18%, like in three and a half years. Well, some would, like, to be fair though, some would say, well, all the inflation we're uh, experiencing in the last few years is because of Trump. So well, no, they'll say that, but the, the reality is if you break down the math, it's because of the stuff that they did in COVID, which was continued into, into Biden. But then the policies of continuing to spend this money stupidly that we don't have. I mean, we're $34 trillion in debt, mm. right? That interest clock is only getting bigger. Sweep more of that interest, it's less that you can put into a system. It, it doesn't just come back, right? And so, you know, a- again, you had a real wage growth, right? You know, inflation relative to what you're actually putting in your pocket under Trump for the lowest income earners for the first time in recent history, right? Whether their salary went up or not, it was almost irrelevant. They were able to extend that dollar more. That is not the case right now. Uh, you know, whether it's at the gas pump, whether it's at the grocery store, you know, across the board. And then they'll buy votes. They'll take a, you know, a kid who went to college and got an underwater basket weaving doctorate degree and they spent 400000 for something that was never going to pay it back. Well, you know, we're going to buy your vote. We're just going to take, you know, you work hard, you pay taxes. Some guy that went to become a laborer, some guy who's an electrician who didn't go to college, didn't take on the debt, is making a good living and a good salary. They're going to get to pay for some you know, kid who went to college for nine years and is incapable of surviving on their own. So, so, so what's it, your it's, thoughts it's like on, a bribery scheme at this point. So what's your thoughts on, because, you know, th- th- there's a handful of people, especially like um, a lot of people who watch me, they've either had to make that same choice, right? Are, are we going to college? Or are we going to go the route of, yeah. you know, pursuing, you know, a trade or job market or some other way to make money? Yeah. Um, it's been a big conversation about, you know, canceling student debt. Yeah. Um, and but there's no such thing as canceling it, right? It doesn't magically just disappear, right? Someone's paying for it, right? So you're taking those who took on the debt, right? These, this is the logic of the left, right? An 18-year-old that signs up for a college loan, poof. well, they didn't know what they were getting into, but a seven-year-old should be able to chop their privates off to become a different gender because their teacher convinced them they were the opposite sex, Right. Well, which one is it? Like, a seven-year-old can make a life-altering decision, but an 18-year-old can't sign on to be responsible? Like, mm. I don't know. I don't buy it. I think that's ridiculous. Well, well, those people would say, well, they agree with what you're saying, right? And I'm taking on a nuanced take mm-hmm. here. So, like, they agree that a seven-year-old shouldn't be able to just chop their dick off, right? But they're also saying, hey, well, the, the idea that is sold of the American dream in college is to go there and be able to get a job, which is actually not happening as as yeah. as much as they thought it would have been so so when they watch trillions mm-hmm. or billions of dollars going to another country for their issues they're like well if you got all the money to send over there how about you help some of us who we can't even establish and, and become um good prospering uh, um citizens well, of this society I, if the debt wasn't canceled uh, or, or I, I, canceled, I agree i agree 100 percent in terms of not sending it to other countries i think we got to actually take care of americans first but i also you don't see a lot of kids on job lines who became electrical engineers you know you have gender studies i don't know i i don't i don't you know, maybe it's great for something, but you have thousands of gender studies. Like, do they really think there's a job for that? No, they, well, they'll, cre- they'll create one in academia to keep funneling out more gender studies degrees, but it's, so it's, it's a not problem, real. So it's a problem uh, um, um, higher education than in, like, these Oh, 100%. Universities. By the way, it's the most declining value proposition ever. Yeah. You know, it keeps going up. What you get out of it keeps going down. So, you know, I'm all for, like, a lot of the trade stuff for, for people. I mean, if you're going to become a doctor, you've got to go through the higher education thing. But if, if you're not... You know, man, I, I can point to hundreds of people that you see. There's like, wow, I mean, that guy's making a six-figure salary. He doesn't have any of that debt. He's doing great. But you're asking that guy who became a plumber, who, who foregoed, you know, going to the college party and being the cool guy for not really learning anything and taking on that debt. You're asking him to pay, you know, for the gender studies degree. And I'm like, I think that's bullshit, too. Well, it, or is it so, and, and I guess... 
and I, I actually want to read the comments on even you saying that because I do believe how it's purported when people when you, when you don't get into the 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 minute details of these things, just hearing Joe Biden is trying to cancel debt. We believe as president, you could snap a finger, debt goes away, everything's forgiven, and and the people who weren't paid, they just go on about their business and say, okay, we lost the money. So we're not thinking that money comes from somewhere yeah, else. Yeah, no, but, well, that's the problem. That's sort of the, the magic of the Democrat. You know, the money just grows on trees. Uh, it, it'll just always be there. You know, that's not the reality. I mean, there's, you know, there... There's a check and balance on all of these things. And so, you know, they say that, they sell it, but it, it's basically a bribery screen for votes, right? It, it, uh, and then as we rack it up and we take ourselves further into debt, things become harder. Inflation goes up more. It costs more to, to get by. And those are, you know, so it's just getting harder. Mm. Uh, and, and we're not doing much to ease that. Um, specific question, uh, which I know a lot of people would be caring about it. Because I, you know, as we were touring mar lago yesterday, I told you, I said, listen, the public conversation or the public opinion, especially with, when it comes to black people, mm-hmm. um, and I want to speak for everybody, but just I'm looking at public discourse and it looks like before it was so anti-Trump to now it's like, yeah. we need a change. We probably need to give someone, even Trump, a chance. Listen, I think... I don't think anyone can watch Joe Biden speak and be like, that's the guy I'm calling at three o'clock in the morning if the shit hits the fan. <laughs> yeah. No, no, seriously. Like, let's, let's go to your feet. Like, hey, guys, honest question. No BS. Like, Some crazy if, shit if happens. If something crazy stuff happens to you and your family, yeah. you have two phone calls, one to Trump or one to Joe Biden, oh. to help you out, to give, to give you advice, not, not just cash or something like that, but to, like, to give you advice oh, man. to take care of business. Like, Hold on. Who, who are you actually calling? Could like, there be a third one to Kamala? <laughs> yes, 100%. Because I'm probably calling Joe before Kamala. I don't, I don't even know. And, that, and that's a stretch because I think, I mean, that, that's, a, that's a dynamic duo of you know, epic proportion. But, uh, uh, you, know, and, you know, that's sort of the reality. I, but, you know, it's interesting. I see I got a lot of shit. I said this a couple weeks ago on my Rumble podcast, right? You know, I was talking about it. I was, you know... Uh, I travel, I, I fly commercial coach 95% of the time, you know, Why? like, it, it, well, it was, for me, it became, it was, it sort of become my thing, right? Like when I started working, as I said, we worked low or whatever. I, I, I worked with guys that were construction guys. And then, you know, eventually as, you know, after college and years of work, I'd get ahead and then they were sort of working for me. And so when you started having teams and you were the low guy on the totem pole, you flew in the back of the bus, you know, yeah, if you're yeah. going to look at projects, you know, whether it was abroad or, you know, when we're building or whatever it may be. And then, you know, fine. But then as I got in charge, I was like, well, I'm not going to sit up front and put the team in the back because I didn't think it was leading by example. So for me, it just became my thing. And it makes it, I wear okay. a hat, I dress casual, and honestly, it's a, it's a pretty awesome... Do you get it, heckled? No, almost never. Really? Like, and honestly, it's interesting. I guess I'm sure there's plenty of haters. I think they just don't expect to see me like dressed down or wearing a hat. So yeah. those who are fans, they're like, oh, shit, that's Don Jr. Yeah, yeah. Those who aren't don't even notice. Yeah. Um, but, but it's interesting. I said it, and I got crapped on because it's like, you know, uh, even the last couple of years, I've noticed, you know, a lot of, you know, the African-American men, like, mm. hey, man, like, you guys got to fix something. But, like, women were always a little bit more reluctant, often very cordial, very nice, like, curious. Like, I, I was going through the airport uh, here, it's like a month ago, six weeks ago, whatever it was, and, like, for, uh, you know, black flight attendants, I think it was Spirit Airlines, were like, hey, you flying on Spirit, we, you, Trump 2024, and, like, in the air, like, loud, I'm like, that was a shift. Yeah, you, you that was a shift. A you know, you know, when you just pick something up, like always very nice. Like, man, when I fly, like half the time the flight attendants are writing me letters, like thanks for what you guys are doing. Like, it, it, it's sort of interesting. But like in front of like literally going through security, there it was, it was loud, and it, they didn't care. Like it, it, for me, that was like, a, and they were like, that didn't happen. I'm like, I, you know, I, I don't know. I didn't tape record. It's not what I do. But like, it, it very much happened, and I'm seeing more and more of that every day. Yeah, I, I do believe that there is a um, um, kind of a shift, at least in the community. And I, I've actually even told you, I think this upcoming election, I do believe whatever the record on Amer- uh, African-American votes that um, your father got before, uh, he's going to is going to increase. But I do want to ask, because for those people also specifically, you know, you know, especially our you know, community, we always look at, you know, we all love. Uh, uh, we, we love uh, uh, Barack, you know, mm-hmm. first black president, and we're proud that he even got to that spot. 
But some of the few criticisms that ever came out of it was like, hey, sometimes I, we felt like he wanted to do things for our community, but it, it, he always attached the LGBTQ community with it. He, he attached, you know, hey, let's put some, some, something for the trans people in here. Let's, well, it, I think the, the trans community is the most protected class in American society right now. Yeah. You know, you, you can shoot up a school and like, they won't release the manifesto. We, the, the motives are unknown. I was like, I don't know, maybe you put a, you know, a three-year-old on hormones for 20 years and like, maybe it's not awesome. Mm. Uh, it, it, well, I think the Democrat Party today, I mean, you know, not even the, but like the trans thing, that's number one for them. That's the only one they care about to me, as far as I'm So, so let me just get the question. So, I guess black people want to know, all right, if Trump get back up in office this time, what will he do for us? And, and we know there is the broader country, but a lot of times African-Americans feel like they're either ignored. You know, a lot of, a lot of us feel like, you know, especially ones that are foundational of African Americans, that they're like, hey, listen, we, we helped build this country. Yeah. And, and, and they're usually okay with immigration and everything, but hey, it seems like if you're an immigrant right now, you move to the front of the line. If you're trans, you get moved to the front of the line. But if you're just regular old black, you're not going to get really anything specific to your plight, which we haven't had the, the easiest mm -hmm. plight over the years. So yeah. I guess the question is, you know, how would that, you know, change under a new administration and one that has already, you know, we've seen some stuff, but what would change or, or continue to change? Well, so I, I think first and foremost, sort of that rising tide lifts all ships, right? You know, you, you grow the economy, everyone benefits from that. You saw, you know, again, he didn't get any credit for it, but like he actually did real things for that community. Whether, again, opportunity zones, that, that's development in the inner cities. That development creates job marketplaces, that creates everything and the downstream effects of all of that, right? It's as though it didn't happen. That was huge legislation, like, I don't know about trillions, but pushing it in terms of dollars to go into those communities. You had the funding, again, historically black universities. Like, wh why didn't those who are so supposedly so in favor of that community, why didn't they ever do those things? The First Step Act, you know, getting people who, you know, were thrown in jail for ridiculous amounts of time for, you know, nonviolent offenses. They're just going to sit there and rot. They have no future. They can't come out of that. You can't get, you know, you can't break that. Uh, that, that cycle uh, you, you coming out of that, like, well, Trump did those things, right? Uh, he, he bet, like, we talked about sort of real wage growth for the lowest income earners. Like, that benefits those communities. And honestly, you know, say what you want. I'm for certain immigration, but when you flood a country with, you know, they're, they're releasing Venezuelan prison gangs into America because they're like, well, we don't want to deal with it here. So do you think that's going to be good for the inner cities? you think that's going to be good for any, any of these systems? So you know, getting control of that, uh, I, I think, is, is fundamental for, honestly, the safety of our children even, and you know, that next generation growing up. Not sending $200 you know, billion dollars to Ukraine and maybe putting it into our schools. So like, you know, kids can graduate high school these days. They, they may not be able to read or do math, but they know the 4,376 genders. Like... We need some focus on common sense. Common sense is just totally missing these days. It's just, it's gone. It's out the window. Yeah. Um, crime in certain inner cities are, you know, skyrocketing. You know, Philadelphia's yeah. going crazy. Yeah. Chicago's been a problem. Um, you know, I remember notoriously when... Uh, a few issues of like, you know, uh, it, it caused a lot of social uprise where, you know, it was about police brutality. Yeah. And, and, and that's one of the things also I do believe the community I come from, that they do, they have a lot of critique about Trump with. Mm -hmm. They're like, you know what, yeah, he, he might be good with the economy this and third. And, and a lot of it, I've personally thought, I, I think the delivery to a community that's sensitive about these issues I, I don't know if he appeals to that necessarily. I think that's fair. But they're wondering, okay, what about these issues that seem to predominantly or, or just yeah. overly affect African Americans, whether it is uh, uh, police brutality or otherwise? Um, will there be any care about those type of things? Especially when, you know, again, the reason why we had those, it, it lasted for a while where... Yeah. I think the world took notice to say, hey, this isn't right. These people of this skin color aren't being treated fairly by the people who are putting power. I, I think that, listen, I think police brutality is terrible. But I, but I don't think that every cop in America does these things. You know, I, I think you have to deal with the cases when, when it's real. But I think the solution to some of these things isn't like, 
okay, we're just going to defund the police and have nothing. Like, I, I think if you look, you know, some of these very, you know, and it, it happens in the cities because they happen to be more left and, you know, we're, we're going to defund the police. And then three years later, they're like, we can't understand why crime has skyrocketed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so. That happened you know, in Baltimore. It, it was like, if, yeah, if there's the a cop that does something bad. The cops don't want to respond no more. Well, ha- yeah, <laughs> well, and I, and I see it too. I mean, I, I know a lot of cops in the NYPD and they're like, hey, man, it's not worth it. I'm like, well, that person's being like raped or like, I'm like. Well, you know, if you know, if we get involved and something goes wrong, and shit happens, unfortunately, right? Like you can tr- you can have the best intentions. I'm not sure. You know, I'm not saying that it always is right, but like I, I will say, I think the vast majority of the cops mean well, and they're risking their lives and they're doing these things. That doesn't mean you don't have to deal with it when it goes wrong. But to just sort of have this unilateral approach that all cops are bad and they're the enemy. Man, it, I, that I was a driving narrative for a while. I, 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 don't, I don't think that worked or, out or well defund, for these places. You saw the mayor the of San Francisco was like, okay, uh, defund the police. We tried that, and it's failed miserably. Like, we have to get cops back on. But now cops are like, they, the, ones, the, the problem is you create a vicious cycle, right? Uh, you, made it, you, you made it so hard. So some of the experienced ones that have 20 years under their belt, they're like, I'm out. Because, you know, I, I just don't want a mishap that something, and I'm, I'm sued, I lose my pension, I lose my job, I lose my home, I lose my wife, and my life is over. Those guys leave. Then you have sort of that fear. So you, ha- you, you have this void that needs to be filled. So now you have to fill it with all these cops. So now you're filling it with younger people that are not experienced, and, and a lot of them. So you're, now you're lowering your standards, which makes it even harder, especially in a stressful situation, right? Yeah. I, I imagine if you're a traffic cop, it's not that big a deal. You can, you can handle that. You know, you start getting involved in bad stuff in rough places, the less experience, the less time, the lowered standard of admission, literally perpetuates the problem where bad stuff happens. And it's like, well, the cops fall. And then, then it's, it, does that make sense? Yeah, no, no, you know, I get it. it. So get it. It, it, it's just gotten very hard to do that. So there, there has to be real accountability, obviously. But, you, I, I, but I don't think you can take a blanket sort of approach and be like, I don't know how many cops there are across the country, but probably millions, and be like, they're all bad, they're all racist. I, I don't think that's a winning formula. No, I get it. Uh, if we're, meaning, if we're going to be honest, about no, no, it, you know, no, that'll no, get me no, in trouble no, with someone. It, but no, like, it, no, I agree. Um, as we talk about, uh, you know, uh, I guess law and order and you know criminal justice and, and criminals, they try to say your father was a criminal. They they, they yeah, arrested well, him. They, they want to throw my father in jail for. 700 years, one of the cases actually possibly the death penalty, which, you know, he's a young and vibrant guy, but 700 years felt like a long time. As a family, like, not, not, not as a politician or, like, mm-hmm. public figure, when these things happen, or I don't know how you get uh, or how you're getting notified about these things. Like, what's your first thought? The reality at this point, like, I'm just so used to it. You're jaded. I, I, I don't, like... You know, I, I know, you know, I know what they tried doing to me. I was probably the number two target of, like, Russia, 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 which was, you know, the full but government. Is, is there a real fear that maybe your father goes to jail? Oh, or listen, even when, that even has when they to be, because, like, the, you know, the reality is just, just because it's bullshit doesn't mean you don't have to deal with it, right? Like, that, trust me, it, it could be very real. Like, you know, the case in New York that's going on as we speak, you know, you have, you know, they literally, they're changing the rules in New York to be able to do that. The judge's daughter Could is a, a Democrat of- fundraiser making millions of dollars off of this. There's, there's literally a statute in New York, a law, on the books. Like, you can't have any link to someone who could benefit from the trial. And he's like, yeah. I'm ignoring that. doesn't matter. They changed the statute of limitations to be able to go after him because by New York law, it wasn't there. They turned it, um, what was at best a misdemeanor, into a felony. But Could if you, you watch CNN, case? like because some people might not yeah. know, they're literally the they're trying to say that it's it's a books and records violation uh, because an accountant, a low yeah. level accountant in the Trump organization, a billion dollar organization that the you know probably dozens of accountants in the thing. My father's in Washington D.C. as the president of the United States, and someone booked. They say that the Stormy Daniels hush money pay, They booked it as like legal expense. He's in D.C. He had no connection to the business. Okay, he so, had no nothing. So, 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 so this was this woman that claimed whatever. Yeah. And she filed a civil suit. She took a settlement, right? Took it, yep. Um, she gets paid. And now the problem isn't that that got settled. It's literally it's, bookkeeping. They want to throw him in jail for years because an accountant wrote something on a paper that said, hey, it's legal expense instead of I don't even know what it, else it could be. It's like, it's like the equivalent of like me coming here. Um, except I'm partying it up, and, and and my assistant marked this trip as all the expenses as work expenses. Work, of, it, it, basically okay. that. But the problem is, it wasn't like he directed him to even do it. 
Okay. This is just someone who's like, I don't know what this is, probably this. Like, let's just write it down. He's in Washington, D.C. It's a couple hundred miles away. No involvement, no conversation. Doesn't matter. This same prosecutor who's doing it declined to prosecute this thing years ago. The same guy, Alvin Bragg. Joe Biden's number three guy in the Department of Justice in Washington, D.C., quits there, moves into the New York office, and now it's a prosecution. Like, Joe Biden's guy left Washington, D.C., the number three guy in the Department of Justice, mm. federal Washington, moves to New York, and all of a sudden it's crime. The prior district attorney in New York declined to do it. The Federal Election Commission declined to prosecute this case. These are not Trump fans. These are people who hate Trump, but they realized it was bullshit. The second, you know, so multiple federal and state agencies don't even look at it for years. Joe Biden's number three guy, you know, the same people who are probably making the decision to not prosecute Hunter for the various crimes, and, you know, we're not going to do anything, he can get away with it, moves to New York, and all of a sudden, we're going to try to throw him in jail for years. Like, that's a stretch, man. That's, uh, if, if you're altering the laws of a state to go after one guy, they did it the same thing in the civil suit uh, with the E. Jean Carroll. They literally, for one year, just for this one case, for one year, they changed all of New York law to open and expand the time frame that you could look back on so that you can go after Trump for something apparently he did 25 years ago when he was also still pretty famous. You know, this is pretty serious weaponization. I mean, this isn't the stuff that America is supposed to be about. If this was going on in third world countries around the world and we were looking at it, we'd say, this is improper. We have to go for regime change. Uh, and yet it's happening right now in America. Uh, one of the, and he has a couple of cases. I ain't going to lie to you. Uh, I, I oh, yeah, it's him. like 96 star, I mean, you know. Uh, Trump, had, he had a line. He said, he's pretty uh, gangster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he actually yeah. said he was just like, it's like, <laughs> he said, I now know what it is like to feel black, but he was talking about discrimination. Yeah. It's like, yo, he feels like he's getting, he's catching all these charges because they're yeah. just discriminating. They're, they're, they're targeting Listen, him almost. I, I obviously have to be really careful with what I yeah. say because I could go, re- but like there's, hey, I'm not saying our justice system has always been fair. Yeah. Right? I, I, don't, I don't think anyone could make that claim with a straight face. So, but so like, I, I do feel like, you know, I thought we were through a lot of that stuff. And again, there's obviously always exceptions, but like this is, you know, this is pretty extreme, right? When you, you know, the Washington, D.C. case, it's like, well, you have a grand jury in Washington, D.C. for a case that's in Florida. Why would you do that? Well, because Florida is pretty popular. Florida, you probably don't get the jury you want. You may not get the result you want. So they're literally venue shopping to try to find the places where we can go after Trump, where he doesn't have a chance at getting a fair trial, right? The judge throwing out, it's like, this person was on the day of the election was cheering that Trump is there and saying, lock him up. That's a perfectly good person on a jury. Like, you think that guy's going to actually be fair? So if, if that's the reality of what Trump is facing, <laughs> and, and currently mm-hmm. he's a regular United States citizen, even mm-hmm. though he's a former president, this is what the rest of us got to deal with all the time. It's, but we don't have as much resources as, you know, Mr. Trump. And yep. we don't have all these other things that are, you know, like, shoot, I just, just read the news yep. that he put up like $180 million in bail, yep. right? Like, the regular person's in jail. So if, if Trump becomes president, granted, he might not have to deal with these things, or maybe, or hopefully he'll be past it if he yep. does. But isn't that an, an indication that, the justice system, period, is a little bit broken. And that oh, uh, dude, it, 100%. Needs, it needs an overhaul because if they're doing that to him, what about the regular citizen who has zero chance? I, I like literally, if you watch my podcast like on Rumble, I talk about it all the time. Like, if they can do this to Trump, and if they will do it to Trump, a guy that has the resource, the guy that has the platform, a guy that has the following, the ability to fight back, who won't they do it to? You think it stops with Trump? They get this win. You know, they don't want someone who's a disruptor. They don't want someone who's changing the ways in D.C. They don't want someone, you know, I don't know, we should keep funding the war in Ukraine forever because there's a couple guys in the military industrial complex that make a lot of money for us selling missiles. It doesn't matter if we mortgage our children's future and we can't afford to, you know, educate them or take care of them when they get older or sick. Like, that doesn't matter. Like, this guy's going to make a couple extra bucks uh, by selling more missiles for Ukraine for a war that they can't even tell us what we're, like, what, what does a win look like? We don't even know. Like, mm. they can't tell us. So, you know, they're going after him, but that's, I think that's my point. Like, I'm agreeing with you 100%. Yeah. Like, if they'll do that to this guy, yeah. you know, again, say what you want. You may not like his personality. You may not like mean tweets. I like mean tweets more than World War III, but that's just me. Maybe I'm crazy. <laughs> uh, but, like, if they'll do it to him, yeah. that's like, I think, like, we're opening up the floodgates to, like, anyone 
who says something against the regime, and it's a regime at this point, like, you're a target. You're going to be politically persecuted. That's all this is. The, the, the situation in um, his case, in, case out of Georgia actually strikes really crazy close to home in, in culture and hip-hop. Yeah. The uh, DA, uh, uh, Fonnie Willis out there, she's actually prosecuting uh, a bunch of people that are actually hip-hop artists. You know, there's yeah. a whole ongoing conversation is that if she's fairly targeting these guys because they've actually committed crimes or maybe because their lyrics are purporting to be violent, you're then yeah. arresting these guys and then holding them for umpteen years as and third. We just watched the whole, uh, uh, the hearings about if she should be removed or because she, she basically put her boyfriend. She lied. She put her, her she, side well, dude. <laughs> she, she lied to the court. Yeah. Her boyfriend lied to the court. A guy that had never tried anything criminally was brought in, paid almost three quarters of a million dollars to, to yep. go after 643, I think, to be okay. exact. But like they then go on lavish vacations together yeah. with the money that she's paying her boyfriend, who's trying a case that he's not a, like he's a civil lawyer. Like he, so he's going to put on the pr- criminal prosecutor hat. Now, it's a DA's office. They have dozens of criminal prosecutors there. They could do that. I mean, this is a racket, right? Uh, oh, we don't have any receipts. It's like, you know, but if someone asks for, you know, I think she's yeah, the word G, I'm like, you know, I don't cash. know. You're, you're, this is a not so hub- <laughs> humble public servant, right? I mean, yeah, you, yeah. You, you're, you're a humble public servant that has thousands of dollars to throw around and only, like, I'm like, what is going on here? But, like, it, it, it feels like a caricature. Like, if we were making a joke, you, you know, uh, uh, about these sort of uh, things, like, this would be what's going on. And yet, that's, that's all, I mean, to go after someone for lyrics, like, I don't know, man. The First Amendment's pretty clear about these things, but it doesn't matter because, hey, it, it, it's hard to fight back. But that, that's my point. I think we're at this very dangerous point uh, where if, if people don't say, like, hey, we got to put an end to this, there is going to be one side you know, of a story, and that doesn't matter. That's, that's where the power comes from, and that, that notion of free speech, uh, all of these things that you know, I, I think we believe in, uh, that's all gone. It doesn't mean anything. Then it's just a soundbite. Yeah. Yeah. Um... On his way out of office the first time, you know, and I, I guess this is why hip hop is, you know, this is a little bit bittersweet uh, relationship with Trump, mm-hmm. you know. And, and when I met when I met your father at UFC, I said this when the first thing I said, I said, "Hey, I said, man, that's what, I'm, I'm a guy who does media and hip hop. Um, I want to I want to tell you thank you for what mm-hmm. you've done. I know you you, you issued a part for Kodak." Mm-hmm. For uh, Lil Wayne, and you got ASAP Rocky out of jail, and the first thing he says to me he says, "I did that." And he, he shook my hand, yeah. and um, you know, uh, uh, how did I, I, I don't know if that's even a thing where yeah. you guys like even uh, acknowledge like some of these people you've affected in pop culture with a via partner or anything else. Yeah. Well, no, listen, I, I think it, I think he just understands. Like, again, like it, in a weird sort of indirect way, I think he was sort of always kind of part of that group, right? I mean. You know, Russell Simmons used to hang out at Mar-a-Lago with us all the time. You know what I mean? Like, they, there was always a, a, a sort of connection. And, you know, things, things may have changed Diddy, a little bit, though? but, like, Diddy, <laughs> I've, had Diddy, I've had dinner with Diddy a few times. This is have you had a party 20, with Diddy? I have not had a party with Diddy, so I, I will go on the record <laughs> and say I have not had a party. <laughs> By the way, that whole thing's crazy. We should talk about that. Cause, but, like, you know, but I think there was always sort of an understanding. And I think, you know, you look at some of those cases, and if someone did something, it's one thing. But when it's, like, clearly bullshit and they're just going after someone because yeah. it's clickbait or it's this... You know, my father's more than happy to step in and be like, okay, that's just nonsense. Enough. Hey, one, of the, one of the differences I noticed, like, you know, personally, and this is only for me, I'm not speaking for anyone else but yep. me. It's, you know, I like the America First approach, you know, and also yeah. I, I, I do like appearing strong. I remember when it came to the conversation of, okay, ASAP Rocky was caught up and he was, yeah. they had him in some other country and, and Trump was like, let's get him out now. You get yep. what I mean? Then we get Brittany Griner, who's overseas, and it's like, yo, she's going to do 15 years, guys. Like, you will see her. And, and then, basically, that was kind of a situation I don't think we looked that strong in. Um, but that was Biden. Yeah, yeah, right? of course. So he just sat saying. on that for years. You know, and again, now, they're also, they, they can be very different. Like, the 15 years was ridiculous, right? But, yeah. like, Russia's not the U.S. Like, you may not be able to bring drugs into Russia and, like, yeah. you know, not face consequences. I, I think we do have a component of us which is, like, well, we can get away with it in America, so it doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah. It's like, I don't know. Like, yeah. Again, 15 years being insane, but, like, you know, Biden sat on that for, what, like, 18 months or something like that? It was like, 
it doesn't but, seem proactive. Well, but then we also gave, what was it, the merchant of death in yeah, exchange, right? Like, ever, right? This is a guy that's probably killing American soldiers across you know, the world he's at this point. He's probably back to it now. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure he's back at it. I mean, that's what they do. So, you know, there also has to be some balance, right? When Trump was like, when Trump was freeing hostages, he did it with strength and there was no trade. Yeah. It's not like, hey, we're going to give you a bunch of really bad guys in exchange for this. Joe Biden is like, well, well, we'll get one guy back. And it's like, well, what's the trade? Oh, we gave, that, we gave Iran $6 billion. This was, what, six months <laughs> yeah. ago? Like, I'm like, oh, wait, I thought we were going like tit for tat. It's like, no, 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 we're going tit for tat plus $6 billion. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. This is no longer a good trade. Now you see what's going on with Iran. You're saying, eh, maybe we shouldn't have done that. So you need, I think what was helpful for Trump from a foreign policy standpoint, like, he was tough. He was unpredictable. Like, those bad guys around the world, and there's a lot of them, like, ah, you know, that guy, I, I he's, like that he's crazy interview. enough to do it. They look at Joe Biden, they're like, ah, yeah, he's a weakling. Soft, right? Like, we're going to take advantage of this guy, no matter what. That's the nature of I, predation, right? I, I, I like that one story where he's like, I sent a picture of this guy's house to him. Yeah, that was, that was with the Taliban. And they're, they're, they had a meeting, and the press is, how, would you, how dare you have a meeting with the Taliban? I don't know, we've been at war for 20 years, maybe we should try to solve this thing. Yeah, yeah. And he had the leader, I think it was at Camp David, he had the leader of the Taliban, he goes, he just pulls out of, in a folder deck, you have a really nice house here. Satellite image of the guy's <laughs> house. He goes, why are you showing me a picture of my house? He goes, something happens to another American troop, you're going to find out the hard way. That's not like my and, president And guess what? I'm sorry. And that's not like my president to be. Yeah. And like, I'm sorry. So that's a very real story. My, my, I, like, I'm not as good a story. My father's a good storyteller. Yeah. When he tells it, it's sort of like, he goes, Abdul, it's going to be a long... <laughs> and, and guess what? Not one more American death in, like, it was like 18 months. Yeah. You know, like, so they're like, oh, you're being, you're, you're appeasing the talent. I'm like, no, man, you're just dealing with the real world. Like, the real world isn't nice. The real world isn't friendly. The real world doesn't, you know, you, you watch our, I, I always, like, it was so shocking to me with the whole Afghan withdrawal and the 13 guys that were killed, you know, under Joe Biden. When we, and, like, and, you know, our Secretary of State, you know, we were told the, the adults are back in charge now. I'm like, he gets up on a world stage in front of Congress. I'm shocked and dismayed, and I quote, that the Taliban did not install a more diverse and inclusive government. I'm like, what the fuck is he talking? Like, <laughs> like no, 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 like, they're not serious people. Like, what, you, there's going to be a trans coalition in the Taliban? Like, what are you talking about? Like, like you, know, you know, like, these are, these are people that they threw gays off buildings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, for... 25 years, like, we've been at war with them. Like, you think, like, all of a sudden, like, and they're like, hey, they're like, what, uh, we're, what we're do the gays people. think? We're going to really, we're going to weigh this, like, we're going to think, like, what do they think? Like, how about women? Yeah. They put in, like, sexual slavery. Like, we're going to listen to them. It's like, I mean, come on, man. Like, yeah. It's not that hard. Yeah, no, no, I, It's not that hard if you're not an imbecile. Like, they're imbeciles because their narrative is just so screwed up. It doesn't, it doesn't work for the real world. Yeah. You know, it works sort of for TV where, you know, they can tell you everything you want and, like, without, but, like, you have Sounds to. good in theories, just not practical. Yeah. But the photo, the, the, the aerial photo of the guy's house, that was just so gangster. I was like, that's a cool story when I heard yeah. it, you know? No, that's crazy. Yeah. Uh, but it worked. Well, good. I'm glad it did. Um, you showed me around Mar-a-Lago uh, yesterday and us having dinner there. I, I, I was like, wow, this is the same place I watched on TV that the feds, I remember when it happened, they were like, hey, they're at his crib, they're, <coughs> they're, they're issuing the search warrant. Yeah. And how did that go down? I don't know if you were there or not, but I was, how did you hear? Yeah, I, I was out of the country. I was literally in the middle of nowhere. I got the call like, hey, they're raiding Mar-a-Lago. And I was like, for what? Like, it's like, and then it was like, well, they're raiding Mar-a-Lago with the hostage rescue team. I'm like, what? that's like the Navy SEALs of federal law enforcement, right? Like, yeah. Those are guys that, like, those are the guys they send, like, to take out terrorists who hijack planes. I'm like, well, why are they executing a search warrant? Like, this, this like is where, this it's is not like my dad was there with right? a gun. You know, but they did the same thing, right? You know, on January 6th, like, Donald Trump tried taking over the beast, you know, the, the presidential vehicle. He was going to yeah. drive downtown, at, like, and they, they have people, like, you know, before Congress be like, this happened. And then they won't call the people who were in the car, Right. They don't ask them what actually happened. And so they have the, this hearsay from these people. And then, like, oh, what was it? Like, three weeks ago, four weeks ago, they finally had, you know, asked the people in the car, no, that never happened. That's ridiculous. Like, I was like, hey, man, if he hijacked the beast and took out, like, a couple young, fit, secret service guys, I'm like, <laughs> I may like them more than, you know, like, yeah. that, may, that may not be a negative, but, like, it's clearly bullshit, and it didn't matter. Uh, you know, so that's the problem, man. There's just so much out there that's just absolute nonsense. But I, I think... Now, you're so, we're sort of getting to this point where people are finally 
they're like, they're getting it, right? They see enough of it. Like you're, they can't lie to you enough when you see it and feel it every day. Yeah. You sort of see the chaos. You see what, you know, Ukraine wars. You see Russia invading their neighbors, obviously. You see Iran and Israel and Palestine and all the craziness going around the world. And you're like, I don't know, man. It felt like three and a half years ago, like we were signing peace deals in the Middle East. That was the, that was the holy grail, yeah. right, of politics. Like if you could get a peace deal done in the Middle East, that can't be done. It can't, well, we did five of them. Like it's, you just can't keep taking the same failed approach that these bureaucrats in government, that's the problem. Like the guys in government, like they may not be the best at anything, but they're really good at being bureaucrats, pushing paper, making sure they snake someone who may be a good or maybe a threat to their power or whatever it may be. And, you know, it's, it's a rough way to lead a country because you're never, you're, you're not leading never with your best. Right. Um, the, 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 so the raid, I think a lot of people also point out though, like, hey, the raid on Mar-a-Lago was very different than the raid at Diddy's house. Did you see that raid? Uh, well, I, I did. I actually thought the raid at Diddy's house was pretty ridiculous. I, I understand the, the raid, but when they're holding like the kids at gunpoint and stuff like that, yeah. I, I thought that was bullshit. Like that, that was, that was fucked up. But I mean, but it was kind of similar. Like I said, in the sense that like the Mar-a-Lago raid, like they're like, they were literally going back and forth with the lawyers for weeks. It's like, okay, come in, do what you need to do. Like, but they show up with the hostage rescue team, like guys that carry machine guns to serve a warrant or, and do a search on a, on a president's home. Like, it, it, well, he's not going, like, full Scarface and, like, say hello to my little friend. Like, you know, <laughs> I mean, it, this isn't happening. But, like, so it's, it, it, that was done, <clears throat> and probably the same with Diddy. Like, it, it's a show of force. Mm. You know, it, it's designed, like, oh, you, like, this is a threat. It's not, you know, it's totally unnecessary. What, um, what, what do you think about that? You know, he's someone who's, you know, operated in that entertainment sphere that's kind of, Similar, and, and, and we do know, like, previously, I think it was maybe the 2008 election, like, he it was, like, he spearheaded the, the, the vote or die movement, and, yeah. you know, he's, he's kind of been politics adjacent, but he's been big, and, and it's kind of like, I know him, him and your father must have had relationships yeah, or whatever. They, they did for a long, and then he went full, full leftist, maybe because of some of the stuff he's been doing, because that whole thing's crazy, but it was, it was interesting, like, uh, and now it sort of all comes back together, just, dude, like I said, I sort of grew up in that world, I grew up in New York, I... You know, before politics, like I used to get invited to the cool person parties. Did I was you, there, did you right? Ever like, hear anything? Not not those part. So not me directly, but it's my my ex wife actually was she was a model in New York, and like she was really good friends with Kim Porter, mm. uh, who was Diddy's wife, yeah, yeah, the yeah, one yeah. who died at forty seven from pneumonia. And I was like, yeah, yeah, that's and what they when said. that happened, she goes, she called me, and this was what a couple, of, I guess, a couple of years ago now, uh, maybe not even, yeah, yeah, uh, it was a, couple a couple years ago, and she called me like. Something's up with that. I go, what, what do you mean? She's like, oh, dude, Kim used to tell me, like, it was a bad, it was a bad, like, there's a lot of weird shit that I didn't even know. That, like, but they were like, you know, they'd do photo shoots together or whatever. They were, they were sort of friendly. Like, they'd, yeah. they'd hang out. Like, we'd see them out downtown and, like, I'd hang out with her. Not so much with, I think it was already sort of over there, but, like, she was really afraid of him. And it, really? Yeah. Like, this goes back years. And so, like, and she was having these conversations with my ex. I was like, oh, like, I, I don't know what, like... A, a lot of people believe that whatever happened there happened with the, the woman afterwards, which was Cassie. And supposedly... No, it, like, like I said, like, I didn't... You sort of don't think about these things until now. You, like, you go back and you're like, holy... Cr-. Like, I distinctly remember when my... Vanessa was like, calls me and was like, hey, man, Kim Porter died. I go, what? Like, we saw her, like, a couple of weeks, whatever it was, it was, you know. And, and she goes, yeah, man, there, she was sort of always in fear of something happening. And I was like, you know, maybe it's natural, but like, not a lot of people die at 47 of pneumonia. Like, you know what I mean? It's like, wow. uh, especially people who, you know, obviously there's, good shape. There's a, there's a shit ton of rumors. There's Again, and I'm not, I, I'm actually not trying to fuel any kind of rumor, but I, yeah, yeah. I definitely, like, that, that's a conversation I had. Like, you know, yeah, someone yeah, who yeah. knew her well, you know, was like friend, like they text, like, was like, something, she was something like, something, she's like, something, she did not believe that was just natural. Th- that's. I think about that because, and I guess that's also it. Kind of leads into you know some people are saying, "Hey, he's the he's a, he's a Jeffrey Epstein of um, um, hip hop," and and then also when it comes to that, people are like, "Well, did no one know until it got too late?" That's, or the, it, that's the problem. I think so many people like they always tried to do this thing. You know, again, they did it with me with Jeffrey Epstein. It was nonsense, right? They they tried doing it with my father because like he lived in Palm Beach and he came to Mar-a-Lago in the early nineties, like. Like, he was literally thrown out of Mar-a-Lago in really? the early 90s. Like, he was, like, a member. And my dad's like, no more. You're out. 
because like there was these rumors, and he was like, I just don't want to be a part of that. Well, I thought you were going to say he called him like in the bathroom. Well, stuff. no, but he was trying shit. to pick up like girls that worked in the spa. And, like, it was like, like oh, oh, he was like, okay, no, 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 okay, no okay, more okay. of this shit. Like you, yeah, you're, yeah, you're yeah, out. Yeah. So leave they, my workers alone, man. Get out of here, man. Yeah. So there was always something about him that we never quite. So he threw him out in the early '90s, but that's why it's so odd that even after he went to jail for yeah. like being a pedophile, like went to jail for it, not like innuendo or like rumor. Like the <laughs> yeah. guy went to jail. He comes out and he's having dinner with, you know, big media personalities and Bill Gates. And it's like, no, no, but he, here's the one. You notice how it's always the one picture with him and Trump? There's one picture yeah. of them together. And they're like, it's like from 1992. And they're like, they were great friends. I'm like, how come you don't tell the rest of the story? How come you don't talk about the other guys that were friends with him in 2017 uh, after, after that all, first, after after all of this shit? Right? That, um, I watched like the documentary. That was even spooky where they're like, yo, the first time he goes into court and when he gets caught with something and... They're like, that, that court proceeding is like wiped from the record. You can't even yeah, find no, it. Yeah, it's just gone. You know what I mean? And so. Is know, that rich privilege or is that like, hey, listen. No, he, that's more. That's like he's got shit on people privilege. And like as long as they're working that, you know, like it, it, it feels to me like there's no way he wasn't working for someone. Whether that's, you know, there's the people say oh, he was working for Mossad in Israel and he was basically there setting up powerful people. Right, setting up powerful people, get them in a compromising position. Whether it's you know Prince Andrew or one of these people, like yeah, yeah. get them. You know, hey, we got a picture of you with an underage girl. Now you work for me. It feels more like that than anything. And then, you know, he got too far, so he was no longer useful or whatever it may be, and that's when they take him out. But like, it- Candace Owens said, um, she believes that the raid on Diddy's house was more than likely, because apparently, I didn't even know, that they said there were princes even partying with Diddy. Like, like a Diddy party is like the cultural apex of... I believe of, that, yeah. It's, so, so they believe that he probably had stuff on people, and what's going on now is they believe that the raid, or she believed that the raid, was to maybe go get that information to absolve those people. Or, or prevent that information from getting out. Do you think that's even possible? You, 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 oh, by the way, at this point, honestly, like, we're, we, we, I did not used to be as cynical as I am now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, really? Now, like, anything is possible. Like, you know, the, you have this notion of, like, what you believe America to be. Like, yeah. it's a fucking lie. Okay? Like, you know, it's, like, I'd love to get it to what I believed it to be as, a, as like, a patriot. But, like, that does not currently exist. And so, you know, if he was running some sort of, and they say, you know, there were video cameras in every room. And, you know, so if you were at these parties and who knows what you're, you know, some guys, you know, oh, now we got to be with it. I, I could totally see that happen. Like, the, like, it actually feels to me like that's more plausible. Really? Than, than anything. Like, I usually look at people like, hey, you're nuts. Like, no, no, th- 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 like this. I mean, I it, was that way, too, before they started like, doing at the, it to at me. the heights of the heights, it's impossible for that to happen without a bunch of leaks and for, for that amount of collusion to happen. Yeah. Except, like, I thought that, too. Until they tried doing it to me. Like, when they, when they first started Russia, Russia, I was like, dude, there must be something. And I'm like, wait a minute, I'm the target? I'm like, wait a minute, like, what? Okay, well, maybe, hey, who knows? It, you know, I got a big follow. Like, maybe some guy took a picture, took a selfie with me. You know, you, they always get you with that. Like, oh, you took a picture with this guy, and he's a known, terrible. I'm like, I don't know, dude. I took 7,000 pictures that day. Like, some guy yeah. shows up with a camera. Like, I didn't, it's not my buddy. It doesn't mean I'm his friend. I don't, I don't know him from Adam, right? Like, yeah. But, you know, even when Russia, Russia, Russia started coming out, I'm like, Dude, well, the FBI said that, they, that there's got to be something. Like, I, I believed in these institutions. I believed that there was some, some honor there and that they were doing the right thing. Now I believe there's nothing, there's no correlation whatsoever between that. It's total bullshit. Oh, man. I don't trust any of it at this point. Wow. I, you know, it, it needs to be torn down. Hmm. Uh, I do got to ask you some cultural questions before we get out of here. How, how long have we been going for, chat? Like a... Sweet. Uh, listen, huge, huge uh, debate going on in hip hop. I, I know you might not be too abreast on listening to every yeah. song, but I, I know you're a cultural guy. I can tell. Like, well, yeah, I, I, mean, yeah. I, just, I mean, this is going to be out of my world. So I, 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 I'll, I'll be pretty naive. Well, well, this is ba- this is basically like, you know, this is like the USA versus I don't know who are we going against. I mean, we're not really at war with, with like Russia, right? But yeah. it's kind of like ten so ways, right? Hey, there's a lot of guys that want to be <laughs> right. Uh, so we have Drake and Kendrick Lamar. They're involved yeah. in like a ridiculous few. They're the two biggest guys yeah. pretty much in the whole genre. Interestingly enough, as you picked me up yesterday, which I kid you guys, I kid y'all not, like literally, I thought I was going to have some dudes with like black glasses on, suits, like 15 car entourage. Open. 
you literally just pulled up, hopped out. Like, like other people who are sitting there waiting for their Uber, they're like in shock. Like, that's the, that's not, they're in shock. And like, you're just like, yo, hop in. Yeah. You know, who we, um, I start talking about what, 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 what I've been kind of involved in. And your wife is like, hey, listen, oh, Kendrick Lamar, that guy sampled me. Like, yeah. he, he actually had my face on the screen. At Coachella. At Coachella. Yeah. And then we, we, connect to the, we connect to the car, we play the song, and, and of course she sampled, you know? Yeah. Um, well, I, I know we were talking about that yeah. fight, and I, I did a little bit, like, just looking into it. With, yeah, yeah. And we started hitting on it last night. I'm like, yeah, I, I think we're losing the plot when everyone's like, well, you're broke because you only live in a $30 million house, and I yeah, live yeah, in a yeah. $400 million house. I'm like, I don't know, man. These are high-class <laughs> problems. Like, I'm a reasonably spoiled individual, and I'm like, this that does was not Rick seem Rose. like the fight. Like, that was Rick Rose and Drake. Drake is like, hey, you wish you could get have a, a, a $88 million house, and Rick Rose has a $35 million house, yeah, and like, he's like, I don't he's know. like, like you yeah. live on a slither cheesecake. Yeah, <laughs> like, you know, this, this is an interesting fight. You know, yeah. this, this is not like the old school days in, uh, in, in hip-hop. When, yeah. You know, it, it was it's, sort of funny. I'm like, I don't know, guys. Like, I, but so I, I mean, I'm curious, like, like, is there a point where, like, actually people get pissed off? Because it's like, no, they're pissed you know, off like, now. like, you know, that, that aren't part of the fight. I mean, do the fans ever say, like, okay, okay. okay, enough. Like, this is bullshit. Like, what do you mean? Everyone, people like, are there's, there may be now. good things to have a beef about, but that may not be it. Yeah, no, no. People are a little pissed off now because this feels like, this is like a side mission, right? So mm -hmm. these guys are supposed to battle musically, and now they're arguing about whose jet is bigger, whose jet is real, yeah. who owns the jet, whose jet is old, and who house is bigger, which is yeah. kind of like ridiculous. Well, Rick Russ did something pretty cool. It was a couple months ago. He took a picture of his jet, I think, next to my father's. Really? Yeah. Like, I, I, think, I, I think it was on his Instagram feed somewhere. Like, funny. it was a couple months ago. But, but it, was, it was pretty funny. It, it was an interesting commentary. And, and that's sort of where, you know, I'd actually be curious. I'll go back and read the feed later on, sort of what, what people think about that. But, like, you know, I remember in 17, you know, Snoop did, like, you know, a video was like a sort of simulated drive-by shooting of Trump. Yeah. And then, like, two weeks ago, it was like, hey, man, I got nothing but love for Trump. And I'm wondering, is that, like, oh, you so, does oh, he feel those things? This within? is it right here, right? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Trump's plane's a little bit bigger, but Rick Ross says that's a pretty it's bad a commercial plane. plane. It's like a cheap, <laughs> like, 757. It's, Jesus it's, Christ. It's really nice inside, though. Yeah. You gotta, Next time you're down, I'll take you in there. No, no, you, you, you got to send a message to Rick Ross now. Like everyone's having rich offs right now. You got to tell him, like, hey, listen, you know, you you got the moped of the, the private yeah. just like. Oh, my, you know, I don't know. Hey, big, <laughs> Rick Ross's plane is much bigger than mine. Not so much bigger than my dad's, but bigger than mine because I, I don't have one. You know, I fly commercial a, coach. Well, well, why don't you have a jet? Just, you're doing pretty good. I do. Well. It, listen, it's just not who I am. You know what I mean? I'm not. I'm not that. I live. I live in. Great house and stuff like that. It's but not like a I drive service. a pickup truck. I just you know it's like you like the finer things. Like, like, like I do, but it's not. It, it, it's like I would never spend my money on that stuff. Like yeah. now, like there's, maybe there's a number that you get to that you're like that. I I would rather give the money to charity than like you know spend twenty grand to get somewhere where I can be there on a three hundred dollar ticket on JetBlue. Like it doesn't make any sense for me. Like it's just not the way I'm programmed. Like yeah. I, I, I I skip the Trump bling gene. You 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 father definitely has. Yeah, that's different. Yeah, he's got the uh, bling um, gene. Um, you know because even. As we're at the uh, the eighteen million dollar crib yesterday, yeah, or what they call eighteen yeah. million dollars. What do you think about that? Uh, one of the, it's you so should go ridiculous. see Drake's house or yeah. or Kendrick's place, yeah, yeah, and then come back and compare it to Mar-a-Lago. You know, given you know where the and, and well, see what you think. Well, I mean, I know real estate, so you know, yeah. you guys showed me literally lots, right? Like, hey, the house right there that's about like one twentieth the size. That's $45 million. We're talking about Palm Beach. So yeah. it's like we're not talking about like, yo. Yeah, because it's hard for people to understand. Like, yeah, yeah. you think of an $18 million home and it might as well be yeah, yeah. You know, Disney World. Like, it doesn't. And yet in Palm Beach, like an $18 million home, it's like a. Yeah, no, hard, it's, it's legitimately like a shitty teardown on a quarter acre. The, like, it's, the, it's crazy. That's hundreds of millions of dollars. Yeah. You easy. know what I mean? It's but it doesn't matter in the eyes of a judge in New York State. He just says, nope, it's 18. Well, here's, a, here's five appraisals from people who are the biggest real estate people in Palm Beach. Doesn't matter. That's odd, you man. know, but that's the that's the legal system we're dealing with right now. That's how much bullshit it is. But like, but no one hears that, right? Like, you watch CNN, they won't tell you that part of the story. They 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 won't. You no, know, they, I, I, I was very shocked just like driving through there, and, and it's like, hey, you could you could pull up your Zillow app, right? Yeah. Oh, that that place right there, that's like just way smaller. Oh, that's like that's forty million dollars. Oh yeah, and, and not 45. even like hypothetical. And by the way, and, the market, and this like, is like pristine, yeah. like. Land like this is Palm Beach. Like you're literally yeah. on. Like it's, it's you're on the, amazing, I mean, right? you're on the ocean. You're on the. You know, it, it's not like an inner lot. Like it's, exactly. I mean, 
And and then we get to the biggest plays of them all. That's almost like all of them combined. And they're like, it's actually one third the price of everything else. Yeah. yeah when that happened, I called my dad. I was like, Hey, if Mar-a-Lago's worth eighteen, I'll take ten. Yeah. I'll come up with. I'll figure it out. I'll come up with the money. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. You know, I, I want ten of those because I'll, oh, you know, I'll, I'll flip them and I'll be a billionaire tomorrow. You know. Why don't you get in politics? I, I mean, I sort of am. I guess you know, I'm out there. Well, well, know, like with an official title, like you know, maybe one day. You know, I, I don't know that I, you know, I think you got to want the day job. I think right now I'm actually, what I like is sort of the stuff that honestly the people on our side are not that good at, like the fighting aspect of it yeah. and just being like, you know, not just, just because someone calls you a mean name doesn't mean you just give up and fold on your principles. It's like, no, why don't we talk about it? Like, we'll, yeah. we'll, so, you know, I, I like that. I'm out there, you know, fighting constantly. It's why, I, you know, I, I do the podcast to try to, you know, highlight the reality that you're not going to see on regular TV, like, cause, you know whether it's big tech or mainstream media, I mean, they're so corrupted. They're so, so clearly biased to the other side. It, uh, you know, someone's got to combat that. And so, you know, do that now. You know, right now, worry about helping my father. But, you know, I, I'd never rule, you know. Like, yeah, I think at some point you will just from, I mean, I, I think it's almost inevitable. I think you kind of have to, but I think you'll grow into it. Like, just even listen to you yesterday, kind of even, even like, uh, Describing the process of how like Secret Service like makes your life like yeah like, so, just, <laughs> so, just so convoluted is like that just seems like a lot to really be in public office right yeah I mean it's certainly at that level right I mean if you're a regular you know congressman senator you're not getting those things I had it because I was the son of the president of the United States and so I don't have it now and I think like, I was also the number two most threatened person Secret in, Service got in be government cool. it has to be cool though. Like I, by service? the way, I, I was, I think I was the number one request, most requested detail because I do cool shit. I treat my guys good. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like, I, you know, I got stories about some, you know, prior political people that were, let's just say, you know, not awesome to these guys. But my, I think my thing, if I ever had an issue with it, was like, hey, I, I want to go do something random on a Friday afternoon, but I didn't give them notice, and there's a shift change, and I'm like, I'm just not going to inconvenience a whole team of guys, even if it's their job to accommodate or whatever it is. I just not my style. So, you know, uh, yeah, it's uh, it, it can be rough. Yeah, I mean, rather than be in Washington D.C., I would want to be here. I'm not. I'm not gonna lie. This doesn't suck. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, it's yeah. like I, I figured out how to how to work from here, and it it, it could certainly be worse, you know. Yeah, uh, definitely would not want to be there. Uh, hold on, I actually, I'm trying to take some questions here from the huh? chat. By the way, uh, a lot of people are asking. There's there's a guy who's a beloved, you know, he's he's, he's a, just a misunderstood guy actually. His name is NBA Young Boy. Okay, uh, he's He's been on federal house arrest. He lives, he lives in Utah. He was on federal house arrest for like two and a half years, which mm-hmm. was, was, to me just sounds wrong. Like if, 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 for what? Uh, for gun possession. He basically shot a music video. Uh, they believe that they, they got a call that, hey, there were guys on a block that were, they were shooting a video and they saw weapons. They pulled so up. So they don't the even police, know? The, the, well, the police showed up. No, no one was there. They grabbed one guy who happened to be his cameraman, and because he's a big name, they seen him on, on camera holding what they believe is a weapon, and they're like, well, we're going to give you charges for that. So he has federal charges for that. But it could have been a prop? They don't even it know? It could have been a prop. And they've been arguing, hey, this is a prop. That's their actual argument in court. He's been sitting on federal house arrest for two and a half years, and you know, he got picked up today. Uh, some something happened at his house, I guess. You know, uh, they, they they raided it and they picked him up. And now everyone's saying you got to ask um, um, Donald Trump Jr. Uh-huh. if Trump gets back in office and this guy's locked up, we got to throw him to the top of the party. I, 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 Come I, on, I, listen. Hey, I'm a big Second Amendment guy. We just I'm a this Second Amendment. I know you are too. too. I also know that the other president's son lied on his gun form, which is a federal offense. Yes. There's cocaine on the gun case, so you can't have drugs and be an active user while also on that. True. And you know they're. Kind of, sort of going after him with it at this thing, but it's not like if there's no proof and it's a prop, that seems like total bullshit. So, uh, uh, you know, and again, I know that I wouldn't get any benefit of the doubt when it comes to this government and this DOJ either. So, like, I'm, I, I take that one pretty seriously because as someone who has a lot of guns and loves shooting and, and, and does all that stuff, I think when they abuse that and they try to push, you know, down the Second Amendment, I think I have a real problem with that. Well, I'd have to get into the details because you know, I'm sure course. there's another side of a story that of maybe course, I'm not yeah, hearing. Yeah, someone, yeah, no, well, well, they, they ran this, like I'll be fair. They ran this house saying that he was he was um, doing drugs while yeah. on house arrest. His argument is that hey, listen, you've had me in the house for two and a half years. Mentally, it's affected me. I have these prescribed. Yeah. They're saying, well, you didn't get these drugs legally because identity fraud. It's a lot of stuff. Anyway, 
Um, it feels like there, there's more important things we should be worrying about, perhaps. Yeah. But like, yeah, you know, that, that's yeah. another one. I mean, not even in well, this, but our federal law enforcement should be concerned about other things than right. that. Like, it doesn't seem like good use of their time. What about um, federally repealing, you know, the law against like marijuana? Yeah. I, okay. So this is one that can definitely get you in trouble on certain sides. But like, I know just growing up, a lot of people, alcoholism, issues like that. I think that if everyone who had a problem drinking smoked weed instead, mm -hmm. the world would be a much better place. Mm. So, you know, I, I don't love opening the door for all of these things because I, you know, I don't know that, you know, heroin should be legal, even if I'm a little bit libertarian yeah, in some yeah, of yeah. these things. Like, you know, I do Didn't see... Oregon, like, like, like I, I see allowed that, some amounts of, like, yeah, cocaine? Like I, but, and I don't know how to turn out. It, 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 well, well, I, or I know decriminalize. they... decriminalize. They, 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 they decriminalize, decriminalize heroin, I think, in Washington this state, and they're like... Holy crap, we have a serious problem now. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, so there, there's some limits to it, but like, I, I guess, you know, that alcohol can be, can do as much. I don't know anyone that's ever beat up their wife on weed, right? Like, you know, or, you know, you, maybe you get pulled over for going seven miles an hour, not 700 miles per hour. So it's like, <laughs> yeah. you know, it, they're, they're so lax on alcohol that I don't think of weed as any worse than that in mm -hmm. any way, shape, or form. So, you know, I, I'm generally, you know, pretty libertarian on that issue. Uh, when it comes to issues like that, and even like a little bit more serious, like for example, like say abortion and things mm -hmm. like that, do, um, do you almost have to subscribe to the party line mantra or thought about it, or or, or do you? Almost no, because what I just said would get me in trouble theoretically with Republicans. Right? Really? Okay. Uh, even even that, I think it's it's a pretty level headed approach. It you know it understands you know hey when I when I think about you know, legalizing, well, you, you can regulate some of it. You can tax some of it. You can make sure that fentanyl doesn't end up in it. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, the amount of people that I know, you know, oh, well, my nephew was at college and he, you know, he thought he was taking a Xanax and it was laced with fentanyl and he, kid drops dead, you know, just a future gone, a family destroyed. I'm like, I don't know, man, maybe there's a way to actually regulate these things and, and do that right so that you don't end up with these problems. Because guess what? There's going to be a black market for it. There's going to be, you know, an underground you yeah. know, way that people get it. They're not going to stop doing it because we say it's bad. Like, you know, I don't think the war on drugs was a success. Yeah. I think it just put a lot of people in jail probably for bullshit for, you know. Uh, so, you know, I think we have to be realistic about, about those things. So even my opinion on this, while I think it's pretty rational and realistic, will probably would get me in trouble on, on my side. It probably will. Uh, but that doesn't matter because it doesn't mean it's not right. So I'm not one of these guys that's just... You must follow 100% of one side, yeah. you know, and, and all of this. It's, you know, I, I, it, it becomes hard in our systems where, especially on the conservative side, where, you know, you got to win a primary. And if you're not, like, all the way over here, you can't yeah, do it, yeah, even yeah. if it's, like, it's not where the country is. Uh, you know, like, I'm not necessarily willing to lose everything because we want to hold tight on one issue, regardless of what that issue is, if, if the rest of the country isn't there. Yeah. I mean, that's sort of part of, you know, being in a, in a republic, in a democracy, right? So... You know, I'm not that way, but it, it is a problem in politics because you sort of, the people you choose to represent, you sort of have to get through that system where you have to kind of be that way. And then by definition, you're changing your opinion just to be able to win a general election, right? That sort of sucks. Yeah. Speaking of marijuana and, and, and all that, didn't El Chapo, like, want to get you killed, man? I, I, I have, yeah, I, I've heard that there was credible threats on me for, from Iran, wow. uh, you know, back after they took out Soleimani. That was probably our whole family, right? That was, you know. Well, well, well hey. The, and, uh, the, the and, Al, and Al Chapo apparently had a bounty on. Really? Uh, that's, that's what I was told. Did, you at that point just like stay away from like that Mexican. Well, I used to go border. to, like, I'm a big outdoors guy, right? So I used to go down like, you know, Baja Peninsula, Cabo, all the way up to Sonora. Like I yeah. used to, I've been to Sonora 30 times. Like that's like peak, you know, cartel areas. You know, I used to go there go hunting in the desert. Just awesome place. I have friends from there. Like just one of the, the coolest places in the world to go hang out. Uh, they're like, hey, you want to come down? I'm like, uh, nah. you know, I told the buddy, they're like, yeah, dude, that's, that's a great way to get yourself killed. Like, you're just, yeah, 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 you're yeah. just a, a trophy Jesus for that mantle. Christ. Don't even think about it. So it's like, you know, you, you got to adjust your life a little bit, unfortunately. Do, do you ever feel a fear moving around um, now? I, I know you say, like, you know, in, in most places, like in the airport, like you get shown a lot of love, but, but you know, you kind of move light, man. You, yeah. you don't seem to be like, well, hey. you know, usually, you know, I'm a Second Amendment guy, so yeah. I got that. I, I, I practice, I train, I do, you know, but like, Honestly, man, you just got to live life, too. Yeah. You know, there's that component of, like, you, you can do everything, you can, you know, and you can slip in your bathtub tomorrow. It's like, I don't know. I, I like to just live life, and I'll, I'll take my chances, I guess. It's sort of the way I look at a lot of these studies. Mm. 
All right, people, I want to give you guys a chance to ask some questions. Uh, hop in, in, in the uh, comment section. By the way, while I wait for you guys to ask some questions, I do have to, you know, and, and my man Chris came over here to make sure I got this in. <laughs> uh, listen, man, I want to salute to the wellness company for allowing this to happen. Uh, listen, be prepared with the wellness company for various illnesses with a emergency contagion kit that is really simple and cost effective. OK, you don't have to have the cost of the hospital or the chaos. Just go to twc.health slash Mar-a-Lago to get 10 percent off. OK, it should be on the screen as well. So you guys could go there. Um, go get a go get an emergency kit, man. You know, maybe save you in the future. OK. All right. Let me see what they're saying on here on Rumble. Oh, ask about Baron Trump and the graduation I'm seeing. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah that yeah, was like, a thing, right? So think about that. Like the judge, he did the same thing, like the different judge, different case was like, you know, my, my dad's wife, uh, his wife's mother passed away. And they were like, well, you got to be in court. We're not letting you go to a funeral. You know, this judge, you got to be there every day for four months. You can't go to your son's grad, high school graduation. I'm like, it just feels like they're trying to just, you know, it's a psyop, right? They're just trying to destroy you. So, you know, I just hope that, you know, again, I think it's so ridiculous. It's so, he's got to be there for jury selection. He can't go to a high school graduation. I'm like, I don't know. I think you can say you can miss something like that. I, th- that's me. But again, I think it's so petty uh, yeah. at this point. It's so ridiculous that real people who may not know all the details that I, you know, try to articulate about how, how shady all of this all is uh, in terms of the way they're doing it, in terms of the way they're breaking the rules. But like, Try to point it out that regular people are like, oh, wait a minute. Like that. Oh, I didn't realize that. That's that's insane. Like that's, you know, so, you know, it is very much, you know, a persecution. So, you know, that, that's what I guess I'd, I'd say about that one. But, you know, it's just another example of all of these things. 2028. They're saying, is there a possibility? Me? You? Yeah. Oh, God. Well, I, I, listen, that, that, that someone would even think it is a, is a great compliment, but we got to let me worry about 2024 first. We yeah. gotta, let's, <laughs> let's get that out of the way and uh, we'll figure out. Actually, there's a lot of here about crypto. That's yeah. sort of interesting. I, I, I like it because I've become so like untrusting of the government. Really? You know, like, but, but I also don't want like, I don't, so, I don't want a government controlled crypto either. You know what I mean? Because I think it defeats so the purpose of all that. With you saying that, given the fact that. Your father was the head of the government. Like, yeah, but, but look at what they tried to do to him. Yeah. They, you know, they impeached him twice. They tried to throw me in jail for treason. Again, that's, again, that's a crime punishable by death. I'm sitting there like, I don't, I don't understand. Like, you, hey. you know, and this wasn't like low-level people. This is the head of an intelligence committee doing it. You know, I had you know, the FBI and CIA create stories that they leak to the New York Times that they then use as the basis to go after you. I mean, this is pretty Solid fucked up shit, shit, right? Like, this is, you know, so... So, yeah, I have almost zero faith in these institutions right now. And, 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 you know, once you've gone through what I've gone through, you'd probably feel the same way. Well, if, well, wouldn't you think that in turn, well, if all this we believe is happening to my father because he's about to run again and he seems to be a favor that he might win, maybe I should just stay the fuck out of politics because if they did that to my pops or they're trying to do this to my pops, they're probably going to put But, me then, but the then they rant. win. Yeah. I got too much Trump, Gene. I can't do that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I, I just, I, I think, though, I, I, I guess the thing I figured out with all of this stuff was, like, I just, I don't just, I don't back away from, you know, I, I guess I fight. You know mm. what I mean? Like, it would have been, dude, it would be so easy. But, hey, I'm staying out of politics. I'll keep building buildings in New York City, not take a front state. I mean, you know, before my father announced, I was a top contender for the Republican nomination. Even if he, if he was in it, I was, like, number two amongst Republicans, right, mm. for, for that side of the thing. You know, or I was I was top three at, at all times, whether he was in it or not. If he was out of it, oftentimes I was number one, you know, a year ago when they were polling these things before it became kind of official. So, like, I, I'm in that fight now, and it's just, you know, I'll, I'll stay in it one way or the other. Whether I run or not, who knows? That's a different story. But, like, one way or the other, I'm going to stay in the game because I think we have to, man. I got, I got five young kids, and I look at what's going on. I'm like, yeah, you know, I, I wake up some morning, I'm like, is there a TV camera? Are they just fucking with me? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like. Like, I feel like, you know, like the Truman Show, right? Like, am I the star of the Truman Show? Like, exactly. there's just a bunch of hidden cameras, and, like, they're punking me every day because that's how ridiculous it's gotten, right? Does that make sense? No, it does. Um, they want to know your thoughts on what's going on in Israel or the Israel-Palestine <sighs> yeah. conflict. Listen, I, oh, wow. that one's a, uh, that's crazy, right? Because it's, it's hard. Um, you know, do I believe... The Palestinian people have a right to exist 100%. Do I think that someone can allow people to take a drone, you know, motorized drones fly in and murder and rape women and children at a concert, like, without retaliation? Like, no. 
you know, do I think, do I want to minimize all civilian casualty? Sure, but you also can't have an enemy combatant that then hides behind women and children in schools and hospitals. And then there's like an outrage cycle when, you know, they strike back and there's a casualty, right? Uh, you know, there's collateral damage. The, the whole thing just sucks, right? It, 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 it's a mess. And I don't know that there's, there, there is no simple answer, right? There's not going to be. I mean, there's, you know, there's so many ways you can play it out. Like, you know, if I'm Israel, you say, hey, you, you could also say, how is it that Israel with the Mossad and their Israeli defense, how is something like that organized that it just happens and, and they don't know about it? I mean, this is one of the greatest intelligence agencies in the world, right? Like, there's so many, like, machinations of all of this. But, like, you know, I, I don't think it, it can just go unanswered. But I, I, there's, there's, not a clean, there's not a clean answer to this. What was scary, like, seeing... They're our ally, though, right? They, oh, they're 100% our ally, right? I, I, like, I, I think... You know, unlike, you know, a Ukraine, which is sort of not a NATO member or there, you know, between Israel and the United States, there's a lot of intelligence sharing. There's a lot of this to go on. What, what, what else is going on in the middle? You know, that's really important. You know, I, I you know, I, I know guys that have seen like the 45 minute video that they, you know, they put together of like, you know, when some of the, you know, the, the Hamas people were going around, you know, videoing themselves like. And when you, when you hear about that man, it, like, as a human, like, there's no, it, it's, it's just, it's scary, man. It's the disgusting stuff. So it, it's just such a complex thing. Now, you know, I don't know that you can keep just killing and bombing forever. You know, that doesn't work either, right? There, but, but man, it's, it, 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 it doesn't it, feel like a solution. problem to, to, to. Well, no, that's to, the other. I don't think we should be funding other people's wars indefinitely forever either, right? Like. I think, you know, Israel, super successful country, very rich. Like, you know, we don't have to be in there doing these things, right? Like when you look at Ukraine, right, same thing. We're going to spend another $60 billion. We're going to, well, what's the end, right? They, you know, when, when Ukraine shoots a Russian jeep, we hear, they made a huge victory. You know, when Ukraine pulls out of an entire quadrant of the country, it was a strategic withdrawal. I was like, no, dude, I think they're just getting their asses kicked. Like, they're, they're losing, you know what I mean? But, like, but that's not what we hear. And then you see the videos, like, they're grabbing 45-year-old men. Like, you're going to go to the front lines to be cannon fodder. You're just a fucking target, man. You're, you're, we're sending you to your death. You have no weapons. You have no ammo. No choice. J.D. Vance is a senator. He's a friend of mine from Ohio. Like, he did a thing yesterday. It's like, Ukraine wants X number of artillery shells from the United States. The problem is we produce one-third of X a year. So they need X to win. We produce one third of that a year. And that assumes we don't have other problems around the world, including our own defenses. And it's like, well, so where's it come from? How do we win? If that's what they need and we produce one third of it, we're, you know, that's the problem with sending all of our jobs and our manufacturing base to China over the last year. So a couple billionaires could save two cents making a widget, right? It's, the world is not a simple place. So we're like, we've got to support them at all costs. It's like, well, we, even if we did, we have nothing for ourselves and we still don't make enough. So are we just going to drag this thing on for five more years, let more, hundreds of thousands of more young men, and at this point probably even women, die on a battlefield for a war they're going to lose? Like, what's the upside in that? I mean, maybe BlackRock will go buy all the farmland and, you know, you know they'll control the food for the world. Like, you know, it, I don't know. Maybe that's the plan. Uh, it doesn't make any sense, right? Yeah. And, and, and the people who are making these decisions, like, you present them with these facts and it doesn't matter. I'm like... They're so much more concerned about Ukraine than they are America. It's like, it's hard to believe. Like, so, you know, I, I'm with you. Like, I'm, I'm just sort of America first across the board. You know, uh, and that includes Israel. My, my man, Sneeko, you ever heard of Sneeko? Yeah. Sneeko says, it's Baron Trump a future president. <laughs> I don't know, man. You, 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 you never know. You never know. But he's tall. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You should play basketball. Hey, uh, what do you think about, like, the, uh, you've heard of the Manosphere, right? What do you think about, like, you know, there's, there's a lot of... We talked yesterday, you know, when we were at mar a about, like, really the pendulum swing, and mm -hmm. there's always an answer to every extreme <coughs> thing that happened. Yeah. And we've seen, like, red pill stuff and other things kind of pop up as almost kind of like an, an answer to some of the things that you were seeing, which was seemingly almost like an emasculate... Uh, like, you're seeing men being emasculated in front of oh, you know, dude, the world, I mean, right? A hundred percent. A hundred percent. I mean... The whole, the whole thing's ridiculous. You know, we're, we're letting men play women's sports now. Like, well, we're the women. Like, by the way, speaking of men, like, you know, this is going on on a daily basis. It's like it only goes one way. You, have, you know, men aren't allowed to be masculine, and you can't have much, and you can't say, you, you know, 
it, it's, it's insane. I mean, there is a clear attack on men, on masculinity. And, and I, I think that's uh, across all cultures. I mean, but, um, you know, you, you see plenty of that in the African-American community mm -hmm. as well. And, like, it, uh, it, it's, it's so flagrant at this point. So, like, I don't know. I'm sort of uh, unapologetically masculine. And, like, I think that's fine. And I think it's probably how humankind has survived over a year. I mean, there, and, and that's fine. That's not to take away from women. That's not to, but there's different, you know, they're, they're, they are different. We are different. And that's okay. That, yeah. That's neither here nor, that doesn't mean one's better than another. You need both. Uh, but, you know, the, I, I have a, I mean, I've literally started business sort of, business is sort of about that, even in the outdoor space, some of the stuff I do. And where, you know, e even there and hunting and fishing, it's like, Oh well, we got to do this, and we we got to talk about that. I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, what, what's going on here? Like, so you know, I I just sort of you know, I, I don't think it's even old school, but I do think that people are sort of getting it now. This yeah. whole like the the attack on male culture, uh, and you know, the arbitrary like every man needs to be feminine, every woman needs to be masculine. It's like, well, well they almost made it egregious to be like, hey, listen, well, 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 well men, they're part of rape culture or they're toxic there's yeah. toxic masculinity yeah. like being a man just became a crime yeah well right? it's, right? To it's toxic masculinity until like you know until shit happens and you need some toxic <laughs> need masculine some toxic guys to go take care of the problem yeah, yeah, yeah. right like you know and, and that's the problem right it's always like that like so you know i, I have a buddy um christian craighead he's he's a british guy he was british sas that's like yeah. their seal teams right yeah. uh and there was a there was a hostage thing i think it was boko haram in nairobi kenya uh, they took over a school, young school kids and whatever. And this guy was w working in the area, drove by, literally threw on a mask, took an AK, and like just went in and killed all the bad guys. Saved, like all these school children. And like the British government, like, this is an example of toxic. I'm like, no, dude, that's a fucking <laughs> hero. Like what, like, what are you talking about? Like, they were like, you should not have done that. I'm like, you saved, like, these guys were... It's Boko Haram. They're killers. Like, yeah. we, don't, we don't have to give them the benefit of the doubt. You know, my father got in trouble when he called MS-13 animals. Yeah. No, they're fine human beings. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> they, they skin people alive. Like, it's okay. Yeah. Like, it, it, what are, like, what are we doing? Why do we need to go so far to try to... Eh. It, it's kind of it's odd. Like, we live in a word, world now that before we could get anything done, we, we're, we're going to probably spend 99% of the time arguing over... What pronoun to call each other? Yeah. Um, pronoun argument. I mean, Zimzer. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, what are we morons? Like, we're making up language. Yeah. Just making it up. And if you don't do that, like, I don't know, man. Like, you know, this is the kind of stuff. Like, if this existed when I was in high school, like, I, so I graduated from Penn. That's where Leah Thomas, you know, the great yeah. uh, swimmer, trans swimmer, that beat all the women records and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like, if that happened when we were like, we would have brought a keg of beer down to the swim meet, and we would have had the greatest time in yeah, our yeah, lives. Yeah. But, like, we're supposed to take it seriously. Like, this dude that's seven feet tall, literally tied the, the O'Reilly Gaines in, like, the national championship, and because they're trans, even though they're seven feet tall, have male body structure, male lung capacity, male muscle capacity, but, like, every, like, what we've got to give, we've got to give it, Zimzer, the tiebreaker. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, we're, we're, like, people have to be looking at us like we're, we've lost our minds. And by the way, if you want to be trans, I don't give a shit. You know, when you're an adult, leave my kids alone. Leave the fucking children alone. Stop going after three-year-olds and trying to convince, like, who's the most impressionable group in society? Like, a young kid, like, you know, the True. teacher said, oh, I must be trans. Like, I don't know, man. Like, you know, I told you last night. It's like, when I was a kid, I thought it was an airplane. My parents didn't let me jump off a building. Uh, you know, you, you go through stages of life. Like, every hardship, the answer isn't, well, you must have gender dysphoria. Like, I don't know, maybe you're just going through a rough time. Let's figure it out. Like, you don't have to chop your dick off to, like... Yeah. It, you know, so we're, we're doing these things. It, it's so... It's so insane. And if you call it out, oh, my God, you're, you know, you're, you're an oppressor, or you're this... I'm like, I don't know, man. Like, I just feel like we're at this point where, like, like, reasonable people have to say enough is enough. And if you do that, you actually win. But if everyone's so afraid... Like I, like I said, I think the trans mafia is the most powerful group. I'm like, and I don't know where they came from. Like, you know, 0.2% of the population has total control. You, you, no one's willing to cross them. No one's... And I've said it. And I know, I know it's real. And I know that other people think it's bullshit because I'm, I'm loud and I'm vocal. And, like, even Twitter 1.0, before Elon and all that stuff, when this stuff first started happening years ago, I'd be like, I don't know, dude. I think it's bullshit that a guy is, like, competing against women in sports. Like, I have girls that are great athletes. I think it's unfair. 
uh, and people are like, oh, man, I hate Don Jr. so much. He's such, but, but, you know, but yeah. he's not wrong on this one. Or like, oh, I can't believe I agree with, dude, if, if like Twitter 1.0, that was like 95% like radical leftist is, is like, okay, I'm with you on this one. Dude, that's where the world, you know, no one's for this stuff. And yet, it's, it's, and yet they still have this, like this choke power. Hold, right? So I think if enough people have the balls to just be like, enough. You just put an end to this shit. And, but I think it's just there to, designed to create conflict. Mm. You know? What about TikTok? Should it be banned? It, this, is a, we, you know, this is an interesting one, right? Because I'm not for banning anything because I'm sort of a free spe- speech absolutist. I don't love the notion of something being used as a Chinese tool. You know, Rumble isn't in China. Yeah. Because they won't let you give a different viewpoint, you know? TikTok, the algorithm. If you live in China and you're on TikTok, the kid that you're following isn't like the dumbest of the dumb that you have here in many cases. You know, doing it's actually stupid. called something different. It's called like boing them or something. Well, whatever. Yeah, but the same. Yeah, it's the same, it's the same it's thing. Oh, my right? If you're a kid and you're doing yeah. this, you're the most popular guy on TikTok. Because they're like, we're going to get other kids to do science and work on math and make, make them think that doing that stuff that will ultimately later on be productive in life is cool. If you're in America, it's like, let's eat a Tide Pod. Like, what could go wrong? Like, you know what I mean? Like, that guy's a hero, and all these other kids are doing it. Like, it, it just, I mean, it feels like it's a psyop designed to destroy yeah, yeah, yeah. society, which, of course, it is, you know. And, like, so I have a problem with that. When, but, I, but I do fundamentally, and this is where it's hard sort of being American and believing what we do, you know what's going on, you know you're at a disadvantage, but you also still don't want to cave to these things that you truly believe in, right? Uh, I mean, I, I believe in reciprocity. I'm like, hey, listen, if, if, if our apps can't go over there and, and influence their culture, fuck their apps. That's what I think. I, think that, I don't think it should be bad. I think they should sell I, well, or force to sell. Yeah, or, or control in America so the data isn't there. I mean, the other problem you have is like this notion like, hey, I, I, I'm 46, right? So I, like, I, am, I am super psyched that when I was in my teens and like 20s, you know, partying and having a good time and whatever, that I did not have a video camera in my pocket and neither did my friends. Like, I wake up and every day and be like, thank God, because I did stupid shit yeah. that I would not want to have to watch today, right? Like, it, but guess what? Kids are going to be kids. They're going to do these things. That if other people are collecting that data and watching, you know, one day that kid's going to be a congressman or that kid's going to be a senator or maybe that kid's a president or, or a titan of industry or whatever it is. Hey, remember when you did this? We're going to ruin your life. I don't know. You know, that could come back to haunt you later on. And so, you know, the the notion that this data is just always available to someone else and can be weaponized against someone later, that's pretty scary because, you know, that's that's real power and that's real control. And we have to think about those things as well. Yeah, no, 100 percent. So, like, you know, again, I I can still be not for banning something, but to understand that, like, I'd never let my kids on it because I understand what what could happen. Uh, All right. We got three more questions and we're out of here, people. Um, okay, real <coughs> Riz. Uh, people are so interested in this. Is, uh, yeah, yeah, change it real quick. We, chat, we're taking three more questions. Oh! Chat, you know, shit is bad. Look at his face. Look at his face. Damn, Fuck dude. Fucking asshole. Indian fart, bro. <laughs> oh, you. Fuck that smells. Fucking yeah. curry muncher. Oh, like, oh my <laughs> god. It's, oh. It gets worse. Uh. Okay, real Riz, he sent in a hundred bucks. Actually, they're really interested in. What's in, my like, vig, man? Do I get a piece of this? T- hey, Chris, give him his cut. What you mean? Uh, so, so real, he says. Do you think? And and again, this is probably a little bit too much in depth for even me. But maybe yeah. you 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 know the answer. Hopefully, so. Do you think Israel is leveling Palestine to build their own Suez Canal? Not too sure. What, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I don't think I don't. It just the land doesn't sort of work that way. I, I get like. I don't think they're trying to create another thing, but, you know, I, listen, I think a, a lot of the leveling is because, you know, that's, that's where the bad guys are hiding, right? I mean, I, I think they are doing what they can within reason uh, to, to avoid the civilian casualties. I don't, I don't think they're just indiscriminately attacking civilians, but, but, you know, sort of Hamas has created this ultimate structure, right? Their leadership is hiding in Qatar and, you know, it's like, all right, well, we'll send a couple foot soldiers to go die. And then if someone, if a kid gets killed and, you know, we'll use it as the next outrage cycle to generate more funding for our cause. Like, it, it, it's sort of, it, it's, it's sort of a, a perfect evil 
right? Where you can continue that. You, you, no matter what happens, you're winning, yeah. even, even if innocent people are dying. You know, and that's, that's the problem when you have sort of leadership that's not actually taking the consequence of the action, right? Mm. Uh, they want to know your opinion on two people, Elon Musk and Joe Rogan. Listen, it, it's interesting on, on both. I mean, I, I, you know, I think, you know, generally speaking, you know, uh, pretty positive on both. I think, you know, I, I don't think either of them are, you know, conservative or Republican. I think they're probably actually left-leaning. But I, I, I do like sort of what they're doing relative to free speech, right? I think Rogan, uh, you know, has a sort of a, a great, you know, following of people that, again, probably more left-leaning and everything like that. But, like, he's like, you know, trans women, men, whatever, in, in women's yeah. sports. Like, this is bullshit. And it's like, it, sometimes it takes a guy like that who has that pop culture sort of following to be like, uh, hey, guys, like, like is, isn't sense. it time to say enough? And so I, I, I think he's done, you know, a lot for that, calling out sort of both sides, the things that are covered from the media. I think he's probably one of the most powerful voices in that. I think, you know, Elon, uh, with what's going on at Twitter, for the most part, I don't think, I don't think it's perfect. And, I'm, you know, there's things that, you know, I, I think... You know, you know, maybe truth, certainly, I think Rumble certainly has demonstrated as they've dealt with the, the attacks, you know, in international space, be like, hey, if, if, if you don't censor this person, you know, we'll throw, okay, we'll, we'll take that loss. We're, we'll leave the country uh, yeah, happen, like, if, if you're not going to do our thing. Somewhere. Rumble's number one. France, you had issues, obviously, in Turkey. You have the stuff going on down in Brazil right now. Uh, you know, uh, so, but, you know, I think, you know, aside from sort of that, that pop culture side, I mean, I think Elon's probably one of the great minds of our, you know, the Einstein of this era, mm. you know, I mean, guys sending, you know, privately sending things into space and like creating yeah, yeah. satellite networks. And like, he's just doing stuff that, I mean, so profound, right? It's just, it's, it's next level. I mean, this is the stuff that sort of advances civilization. So, you know, I, you know, I, I got nothing but respect for that. I don't, I don't know necessarily, you know, fully where he stands on that, but I think, you know, if what he's saying is accurate and what he's doing for the most part, you know, it's not, I don't think it's perfect, but I mean, I, I think, you know, for mankind as a whole, uh, it's really important. Mm. What about uh, the artist formerly known as Kanye West, a.k.a. Ye? <laughs> Listen, I, 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 uh, I, I don't actually know him. I, I've never, never, I think we've like, I've spoken to him like, like FaceTime a couple times through other friends that knew him, whether it was Candace or, you know, Charlie Kirk, some of those guys like yeah, yeah. years ago. I mean, Clearly a genius, you know, clearly also like manic in yeah. his own way. So I'm, I'm trying to figure it out. I can't tell if some he, of this. He at one point wanted to run for uh, presidency too. Oh, I, I, you know, I know the people were doing the Trump West ticket. <laughs> I, <laughs> Could that happen? Hey, you, know, hey, you never said Who's never the VP, never. man? We need a leader. Yeah, we, you know, I, I, thought this I, I saw some, you know, you for VP. I, I, I mean, I mean, that, that could happen, but, you know, I. I I'll be on the I'll be on the Don Jr. ticket in 2028. Let's get yay on this one. Really make heads explode. Yeah, let's get yay on this one. Uh, well, you know, I mean, obviously he's he's also been deplatforming and he's been he's came under a lot of fire for like you know some of his like like yeah. words and things like this, and they they've uh, called him anti-Semitic. Um, do you think? You know, and I don't know how closely. Again, you haven't really met him. In, I, you know, like, like I that. said, I don't, I don't know him that way. I, you know, I, 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 listen, I, you, you hear some of the stuff you say, and I'm like, ah, it's a little, you know, <laughs> yeah. it, it, it's a little much. And, you know, the, you know, but then sometimes you just sort of be like, well, he's an artist in the moment, and there's this. Uh, so I, I just, I don't know him well enough, and I don't, I don't honestly follow it enough to be like, okay, this is where his heart really is, and he's, he's saying the quiet part out loud, and maybe, got, you know, and he actually believes He's heavily it. against abortion. When he went yeah. on his, his pre campaign well, yeah, the, 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 he you started know, crying, he said he's not with it. Yeah, no, he, listen, I, I appreciate probably what he did in terms of, you know, finding Jesus and some things, and I think maybe some of that conflicts with some of the other things he said. I, you know, yeah. the, the, <laughs> so you're having a hard time yeah, figuring no, out like, where, where yeah. he really stands. Yeah. But, 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 but he definitely, he, from the African-American community, he, 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 he took... Took a great leap um, <coughs> by, when, when he sat with your father in the Oval Office. I think yeah, a lot no, of people I, listen, felt I, like I think that took balls, and it, you, you appreciate that. And then, uh, but I, I think he also like showed up to Mar-a-Lago and brought like Nick Fuentes, who my father would have no idea who mm. that is. But it's like this alt-right kind of. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm like, you know, you don't need to do that either, right? Because yeah, it's like true. then it's like, oh, it's like I said earlier, you know, the, the, like my dad has no idea who that is. And it's like, and it's like, oh, so that feels a little bit like an ambush, and that's that's not right either. You know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. That, it, it, it's hard. I mean, as an artist, you appreciate 
what he is, and, you know, perhaps what he could have been. Maybe he could have gone down as one of the biggest ever, right? No, he's, and like, one of, he's, he's one of the biggest ever. I, I that, think in that, business, that maybe he harder have done more. now. The business side is going to be harder. Yeah, yeah. The business I think side he'll, is be I more. think he'll do great, almost irrespective. I think he'll always have a following, but it's hard to get to maybe the highest level without sort of the aid of corporate, the corporate world uh, globally. And I think, you know, at this point, they're 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 looking at it, the calculus and saying. We can make a lot of money, but there's also a lot of risk that comes with it. And, you know, and that's hard. I, I deal with that myself, just it, being a Trump. It, 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 do, you, do you see anyone out there? Like, I think when Trump goes from The Apprentice to being a presidential candidate, I think people are like, ah, this won't happen. But obviously, that's for the highest you know, office in the land. Yeah. But there has been, you know, Arnold Washington, like he yeah. became governor. And do you ever foresee anyone that could ever do what your father have done coming straight from a non-political background straight from either business or a tv career in, in doing that i think yes but i think a big part of the attack on my father is also by design to take those people who weren't part of the machine who weren't part of the bureaucracy who were and be like you sure you want to do you this? sure you want to do this okay you know we don't want a disruptor we, we, we like the control that we have. We like the power we have. We'll tell you everything's all well and good. We'll make a lot of money in the process. We don't want someone who's going to come in and blow that shit up. Uh, and I think, you know, not all, but, you know, a big component of what they're trying to do to my father is about sending that message to, you know, Elon's not born here, so he couldn't run for president. But, like, you know, if you had another Elon, be like, hey, man, you got billions of dollars. Is it worth your while? You want to risk going to jail for 700 years because you really believe this or you... You know, you're better off just buying into, you know, what we say, you know, donate some money to the Democrats and, and, and call it a day and live a nice, easy existence. You know, that, you know, I, I think that a lot of this is very much by design to make sure that no one comes in from the outside or, uh, or, or you don't get perhaps the best of the best coming in from the outside. Yeah. Uh, we got one more question. The last question. And by the way, this has been an amazing broadcast. We've been going strong for over two hours. Um, Unbeknownst to anyone, we've had 15,000 people on YouTube just consistently. Uh, we had 20,000 a point up on, on Rumble. So cumulatively, we were definitely pushing over like 35, close to 40,000. Uh, last question. Somebody make it good. Somebody make it good. I'm seeing some of the same questions here. By the way, listen, you know, it's, it's the first time I've met him, the first conversation we've had. Like, I, and by the way, I would love to have a, another conversation with you Let's as do time it, man. goes on. Yeah, I'm, you know, I, I'm game. No one I, I never the world needs more actual conversation. You know what I mean? Yeah, Not, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, and, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to go back and people are going to be like, yo, he just sat there and let him spin him. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, but, listen, you're going to take undue amount of shit. I, I'm probably going to get written up as like a terrible human being for something I said. I think I've been reasonably well behaved, but, you know, there. Someone will always have a problem with it. And guess what? That's okay. I, I think maybe that's what I've learned. In, you, you just got to, if you're pleasing everyone, you're not doing anything. You know sure. what I mean? You're, 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 not, you're not at all edgy. You're not at all this. You're not coming up with anything novel. Like, there's, there's no way to make everyone happy in this world right now. And that's okay. You don't have to. I agree. Uh, I, guess it's, I guess it's two questions, but I'll ask this one. Chris is trying to tell me something. Uh. I know. You know aliens. What I'm aliens. Uh, yeah. No, no. The, the, la, we just want your thoughts on aliens or the truth on aliens, okay? And uh, also uh, thoughts on reparations. You could address either one first. Uh, well, aliens, like, honestly, it feels like uh, this was like when my dad was so proud of it, I had him on, like, you know, my podcast quickly just to be like, hey, what do you think? And he, he sort of just, it? I was like, it was the only question I actually wanted. Like, I, I don't care who shot Kennedy. I'm like, aliens. Like, what, what's going on? And he's kind of blew me off. And I'm like, wait. But now, like, that's how fucked up the world is right now, right? Like, they're like, here's video of UFOs. And no one cares because the world is actually more chaotic that as we're literally seeing, like, actual real world evidence of these things. And they're basically, like, the Pentagon's basically admitting that it's real. And, all, and like, no one cares because it's like, eh. Like, has your dad seen an alien, like, Area yeah, 51 that I, type that I don't, thing? I don't think so. At least he, ha he has not told me. If it, if it was, it was classified, it, it, and he didn't tell me. But there wasn't even, like, a, like a week. Yeah, you know we're like, like, son, I've I, I seen him. It had 15 eyes. Yeah, I'll, I'll bring it back up. You know what I mean? Uh, if, if I see him somewhere between one of these court cases, I'll, I'll, I'll bring it back up, and, I'll, you know, I'll let you know if there's more of a hint. But, like, it, it feels like they're actually releasing real evidence of, you know, this stuff. And, like, everyone's yeah. like, eh, just Tuesday. 
Uh, I'm, I'm always only skeptical because aliens seem to, to, to consistently pop up in Vegas. Like, well, what's up with that? Like, yeah. are they gambling or what? <laughs> are they rigging the odds? Like, what's going on? You get what I'm saying? You never know. Nevada, they're seeing the most amount of aliens. I knew, I knew the one alien store was bullshit in, in um, Miami. I'm like, the aliens should not go to South Beach, okay? Nah. The aliens go to the... the well, desk. but I think they also find them in the random areas because you don't have all the light pollution, so you're able to see these phenomenon mm. in space that you just don't get. Like, in New York City, you don't see the stars ever because everything else is so bright. Like, yeah, yeah, just yeah. the shit in the air catches it. So it's, it's always these... You know, once you get outside of Vegas, it's yeah, nothing for hours, you know what I mean? That like You can yeah, find yeah, these yeah. places. So, you know, that, that sort of makes sense just from a, you know, visual perspective. But, like... Listen, I, I am not, I, I, I believe like 100% there has to be something. Like you can't have, like we're, we're the one like unique phenomenon in, in something that's infinitely large, the size of the universe. Like I'm like, that, that can't be. I, now, I don't know if that's a, a sentient being or, you know, an amoeba. There's probably a lot of all of it, yeah. but there's got to be something. I remember watching Independence Day and I, and I always remember like Will Smith like brain dragging that alien yeah. back and I'm like there has to be like an alien carcass somewhere like yeah. in a lab that we're studying their, their how how they deliver well, they all look the same in the movies right yeah, like why, yeah. why is that the choice why doesn't it look totally different and they all kind of always look maybe the, same, the person so. who really saw the alien he gave yeah, the, the, the structure this is the, the design you know mm. uh reparations um th- that that's that's a conversation that's been ongoing uh I feel like it comes up here and there and and, and, and people always wait for some type of Hey, listen, if if people are getting either paychecks or what's supposedly due to them, what about African-Americans and reparations? Yeah, I, listen, I, I'm not generally, I think it's, A, you see the stuff going on in California, and it's like, well, you know, if we took 10x the California budget, this is, I'm like, what, like, you know, I, I look at, you know, me, do, do I pay into this? Like, my grandparents came here in 1906, was, you know, we were never, eh, uh, right? like, I, I, I think the idea is that gets... African Americans built the country, so anybody who even uh, are even a byproduct or a recipient of anything good should pay into the people who are the ancestors that helped build the foundation, and those direct those direct descendants of those ancestors somehow, which obviously wouldn't be me, yeah, by the listen, way. I, I get the concept. I'm, I'm sort of. You know, I'm not long these concepts because, I, a, a, I think they're too complicated. I think they'd get taken too advantage of. I think, you know, when you see some of the numbers that are being thrown around, it's like, it's like mind like, like Bernie had said, like, he, like he had mentioned that, too. Like, he was like, yeah. Yeah, like, like you know, Bernie California, they're like, oh, it's like $30 trillion and we can be fine. I'm like, wait a minute. Like, what, <laughs> yeah. like, what are you talking? Like, let's see. So, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know. I think it's one of these things, obviously, a, a disgusting and terrible time in our country. I, you know, I, but I, I just... I don't know how you do that reasonably, logically, equitably. If there, if uh, there was a way, say, say some little genius came up with a way, hey, listen, we're not giving no more money to Ukraine. They're cut off. We're not giving this. And then this excess money, we're going to give some to schools, some of this, and let's but, give but this think, amount. But, well, that's different. Let's market I mean, some I bill. Think, like, isn't that what they do? But with, I think you're politics? starting to do that you know, with, with, certain, with, you know, with schools or, again, you know, funding historically black universities. You're not you know, necessarily funding historically white universities, right? They're, there is some difference. There is play there. I think you've seen, you know, certainly this will get you in trouble or me in trouble, but you see, you see some of that with, with affirmative action or something like, right? There, there has been stuff in there. No, people are going to say that's not enough and people are going to say it's terrible that you say that. But, you know, I, I think as a country, we're trying to, trying to get through that. I think, you know, as someone who's been out there a lot all over the place, like, you know, I don't and have not seen sort of the rampant racism that I'm not saying it doesn't exist. Right. But it's, it does not seem like it's what it, what it's made out to be. And I think there's probably, you know, racism in cultures across, you know, you see, you know, some of the, I see a lot of, you know, a lot of gay guys hate the trans people. And, they're, they're, and like, I, I'm like, I, I, I kind of want to get to a point where everyone stops hating each other. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, you know, taking from one to give to another now and understanding again, the history, like, I, I don't know that that solves any of these problems going forward. Yeah, yeah, I think it's definitely, uh, it's definitely a, a multi-pronged, a multivariate yeah. like situation. And that's you know, that to, again, you know, I'm, I'm trying to be as honest as I can without yeah, also no, no. getting my, but like, it, man, it's not an easy one, you know. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, I think I think that's a pretty decent answer. All right, um, chat. I, I, I think we have covered everything as much as we can. I appreciate all you guys. Um, this has been an amazing stream. I, I, first and foremost, I just want to thank Don Jr. for being such a you know, gratuitous host. 
pleasure, you, Glad you could do it. You know, I'm, I'm gave us a tour yesterday. You made you made all available time for us as much as we needed. Made sure I had anything I needed. Um, you, you've been more than you know gracious to me. So I just want to thank you. My pleasure. And um, thank you for sitting with me. Thank you for for being as honest as you can. You know, there was no script. I'll be very honest. And for anyone who might ask, because I know there's going to be questions. I did not submit the, the 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 talking points that I wanted to ask from. I wrote in bed this morning in my notepad. And by the on, way, on my phone. Did, did I say that there was anything off limits? No, there was no, like, there was no prompts. Yeah, no, no prompts. Like, there yeah. was no don't talk about this. Hey, make sure you ask. No, none of that. Um, it was honestly just a conversation. And shoot, I, I got every question I got. I had to ask off here, and I'm glad I got to answer the or ask the questions you guys wanted to ask. Um, I do know you have a Rumble show, and I do want to yeah. give you the, the, the platform and the chance to promote that. There's a part of my audience who's on here, and I know there's a yeah. lot of people who love you that are watching for you. Mm -hmm. So how could they find you on Rumble? Yeah, I'm on Rumble. I have my podcast is called Triggered. I'm on uh, Mondays and Thursdays. Chris and I talk about doing a little bit more of that, especially mm -hmm. as sort of the world gets crazier. It's yeah. just, honestly, there's so much to talk about. And, you know, some days it's guests, some days it's politics, some days I'll do, you know, sort of what you're doing, which is like a... You know, ask me anything, and I'll sit there for talk for two you hours. You from here? Or you like, you have yeah, a I, I have a studio above our garage. Really? So, although, like, honestly, I like your backpack setup because if I could sit out here and have a cigar, like, I could do so much more. When you're in the studio, you're like, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah, you almost feel uh, like you just, you know, especially for the ask me anything, just like sit there and talk and have a cigar and whatever it is, like, uh, you know, it, that's just great. But hey, man, I, I'm glad you like it. We'll have to do it again. No, of course. Uh, I'll listen. have to get you on with the big guy one day. I know I know there were definitely some people that were like, oh, it's just Junior. That's bullshit. No, all have... three of us should do something, you know? We can like, do that. We, it could be fun. Uh, listen, what I'm happy about is that, you know, I'm, I get to at least open up a lot of communication, you know? Yeah, that, listen, I, I think it's important because I think there's, there's been so much, you know, a lot of misinformation, a lot of, of lot, you know, just, just out there. So, you know, anything you didn't do to kind of just be an honest broker and all that, I think it's really important. Yeah, definitely. All right, people, thank you guys. Uh, Am I good? Did I read any ads? Uh, yo, Chris over here, he's just like, he's just like thumbing through the chat. Now I'm flat. Yeah. Uh, listen, uh, thank you guys. I will be back on stream. I know a lot of you guys are like, okay, great. Now we got our politics fixed for the month. Let's get back to the rap beef. Let's get back to the rap and music stuff. We're going to get back to it. Actually, expect the stream tonight. Um, if you guys are watching a rumble and you haven't hit the subscription button, please hit the follow button. Please subscribe. Okay. Uh, also, if you follow other platforms, please do the same. You guys can catch me on social media at I'm academics on Instagram. Of course, at academics as well. That's the, the media page. And of course, where could they get you? Uh, yeah, you know, Donald J. Trump Jr. On basically all the platforms, uh, you know, truth, social, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and then Eight. obviously the, the rumble, you know, triggered podcast. And you probably got to go to his page to see what he's posting because super, super shadow ban. All right. Yeah. 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 It's not going to pop into your feed. I promise you that. But uh, you know, if, if you follow me, you'll, you'll probably have a couple laughs out of it. You won't Whether get... you agree with anything I say or not, it's still funny. Exactly. All right, people. Thank you for watching another. Uh, well, actually, I was about to say podcast, but this is a live stream. This is lit. All right. Peace out, guys. Be good, guys. <laughs> Never be in the Indian allegations, man. Baby, where are you going? Yeah, you can't have fires out here, man. Yeah. You're getting arrested, man. Oh, this is... Who... Are... Can you me back? Come on. This is fake, bro. No, it's not a joke, bro. I see your mic, dumbass. You're like a million this times. Is, you can't have fires uh... out here, man. Yeah, no fires. Hands on your back. Come on. You're getting arrested, man. No! This is who are you guys? Can you do it somebody resists arrest? Who are you people? What the fuck is this? What the... What's the FBI, dude? You see this? Yeah, I don't know.